All right, everyone. Mic check. Are we are we good? Are we live here? Oh my goodness. One waiting screen after another. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, this is the first this is the first one. So, we got to we got to take it slow here. Make sure we're good. It looks like we're live. How's it going, guys? Okay. No, it's 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 live now. I just got to uh <laughs> Make sure we're good before we actually start. Okay. Mic check. You guys can hear me? We're good? I had a mini panic attack there. <laughs> I was hearing double through my speaker. He saw she booty this. All right, so you guys can hear me? We're good? Okay, welcome. Hey, what's up, Time Zombie? We're good? Okay. My palms are sweaty, and I'm not even joking. My palms are like soaking in sweat. Why am I so nervous? All right, guys, welcome to the first, technically not the first, but let's call this the first live stream ever done on YouTube. Here we go. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, guys, how's it going? Wow, looks like there's people here in the chat already. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, uh, I've been doing a lot of streaming on other websites the last couple of years, but uh, never on YouTube. And uh, I've been trying to get this set up that I'm like legit nervous. <laughs> I'm like actually, okay. How's it going guys? Good to see you guys. Uh, okay, so welcome to the podcast. Um, there's a few things I would like to to address before we uh, open up the chat and engage in the chat too much. Um, and if people uh, donate or anything to the stream, I want to thank those in just a moment. Um, there's a few things I would like to go over first. Um, welcome, first of all, to the Eric a broadcast live. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done any sort of, sort of a podcast here on my YouTube channel. My name is Eric. I live here in Osaka, Japan. I've been living here now for about four years now. Um, and I have been off of YouTube for a bit um, for various reasons. We're going to be talking about that today. I'm not dead. Uh, um, but uh, I'm very excited to be back on YouTube. Uh, and I'll be, again, going into the details that, about that in a sec. But let me just get some things out of the way first. If you're new to YouTube Live... Uh, there's some features that are exclusive, exclusive, exclusive to this website. I'm like actually nervous. This is weird. <laughs> uh, no nerves allowed. I know it's weird. I'm not normally camera shy, but something. Let me get some coffee or something. Um, YouTube Live is a little bit different than other websites you might be familiar with, like Twitch or Facebook Live or Instagram Live, things like that. So I just want to go over those first. Um, I'm kind of new to it as well, so we're going to be hopefully improving the podcast or any future live streams uh, as we move forward here. I think today we have a good... Uh, oh, I already see donations. Wait, wait, I need to wait. I need to... Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so first of all, because this is a podcast, we have to keep in mind that there's people that are going to be listening to this podcast and not watching it. So like say they're driving to work and they might pull up the podcast and just be listening to the audio. So because of that, this is gonna be a little different than a traditional live stream that you'd probably normally see where I might just be reacting to the chat like in real time for the whole thing. Because if you're listening to it and not able to see the comments, out of context, it might not make much sense. So we have a plan of how we're going to make this kind of feel natural and make this work, I think, for everyone. And we'll, of course, uh, improve the stream as we move forward, um, you know, based on your guys' comments and things like that of what you guys think we should do. So uh, first of all, if you look, uh, this is a live stream. So there's people in the live chat right now. Uh, got lots of viewers. People are <laughs> donating money and stuff right now. I got I to gotta ignore that for just a second, and I'll, I'll get to it in just a moment, I swear. Uh, thank you, first of all. But uh, uh, yeah, so you can interact in the live chat. One thing you might notice is that some viewers already have these uh, unique badges next to their names and custom emojis that they're using. What that is is a paid membership that you can actually join on YouTube. If you're familiar with uh, websites like Twitch, for example, on Twitch, you can do a paid subscription which is different than a YouTube subscription, which is free. It's a paid membership, basically, which gets you access to some uh, some extra features, mostly just within the chat. Uh, but uh, one big one that you get on Twitch is a bunch of custom emojis. YouTube has the same feature. Now, because I'm new to YouTube live streaming, we only have, I think, five or six emojis right now. Um, but if you do decide to become uh, a YouTube member, uh, if you look underneath the video, there's a join button you can click. 
which is a paid subscription, completely optional, not required, of course, uh, but it's, it adds a little bit of flair for those who maybe want to support the channel and just have a little bit of, uh, you know, something that makes them stand out from the rest of the chat. Uh, if you do become a member, you get a little takoyaki ball badge uh, next to your name. If you don't know what takoyaki is, it's a famous uh, Japanese Osaka treat. Uh, very delicious, and I've made some videos about uh, that as well. Uh, so I thought it'd be fitting, because I live in Osaka, Japan, to do a little uh, takoyaki ball. Um, over time, that takoyaki ball actually changes colors depending how long you've been a member. So after we do this for a year, there might be some people with like veteran badges, which I think will be cool. Uh, you also get custom emojis um, that work both in the live chat, but also in comments on any of my videos. So if you're commenting on the videos, you'll see both the takoyaki badge and the uh, custom emojis that you can use on comments, which I think is pretty cool. It's a cool way just to get a little extra um, if you do decide to support the chat uh, or support the channel rather. Uh, on top of that, if you do become a member, you gain access to a few extra features. I'm starting to do a little bit more behind the scenes, posting just some... Uh, a little bit of my editing process and a little bit of like outtakes during shoots and stuff like that. I'm gonna be, I, I've already been posting those on Patreon, but since I've been doing Twitch, I haven't been, uh, promoting Patreon so much since I haven't been on YouTube as much, um, but I'll be posting any behind the scenes on uh, the Patreon page and also for members and also for Twitch subscribers. Um, an additional thing that you get if you become a member is uh, there's a private uh, chat channel that we have on our Discord channel. Uh, Discord is a great uh, application that you can get on your phone or on your uh, computer where you can chat with uh, other fans of the channel, basically. Um, they can share memes and chat, and um, there's one chat channel, though, that is set aside for uh, patrons, Twitch subscri paid subscribers, and uh, YouTube paid members. The, the terminology is a little different between the website, so I'm getting used to it myself. But uh, So that is an option if you do uh, decide to support the channel. There's already some people in chat who have become members uh, before the stream even started, so I will be addressing those in just a moment. Uh, an additional thing, I made some notes here so I don't forget, sorry. Uh, YouTube uh, chat has a feature called Super Chat, uh, which I think someone already used in the chat here. Basically, uh, you can pay a couple dollars. I think it's like one, two, or five dollars to have. Um, if you want to highlight a message, um, more or less, you're just supporting the channel, but you can have a, a little message that you want to type. It'll pop up on the screen. It'll stay in the chat, but also pop up on the... Uh, the uh, the podcast screen and stay up there for a while visually. So another option if you would like to uh, support the channel, that's a uh, neat way to do that. Um, uh, so uh, because this is kind of a, a a smaller channel and a new podcast, I don't have any traditional sponsors like uh, you know Dollar Shave Club or you know Me Undies or any any other sponsors you maybe hear from traditional podcasts. Maybe in the future we'll see. But right now you guys are my sponsors, right? Like anyone who just watches. Look, I wish I had a. Oh yeah, I got a little uh, and a little uh, fucking thank you. So fucking thank you for anyone who's just subscribed to the channel, who has watched the video, liked it. Um, but in addition, if you become a member, or decide to do super chat or Patreon, any any way you decide to support, um, you guys are supporting the channel. So I appreciate that. So what we're gonna do is basically treat. Um, rather than do like a commercial break, which some podcasts have, you know, uh, they have sponsors, so they do that. You guys are my sponsors. So what we're gonna do is at the beginning of any podcast. Um, again, everything I'm saying right now, I'm make I'm gonna make like a 30 to second, 30 to 60 second video um, moving forward. That's just gonna explain it all really quickly, so I don't have to do this every single time. Uh, I just don't have the video ready yet. But starting like next week, if we do another one, I'll have like remember you can uh, become a member. Click here to join today. I'll I'll have something like that, so this is a little better. Cause I see sc chat scrolling. I'm not trying to ignore you guys. We're gonna I'm gonna scroll. Up. I'll check chat in a second. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is that um, we're going to be taking little commercial breaks where uh, that's when I'm going to pull up the chat and we engage with people who are in the chat. Anyone who has uh, done a super chat donation or become a member or subscribed, any sort of um, support or any chat or any question that you have will be addressed in those segments. We'll call them commercial breaks. So at the beginning of the podcast, we'll do about 5, 10, 15 minutes of engaging with the chat. And then I'll start the podcast and have the chat the uh, the chat off the screen. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm doing a podcast and talking about a specific topic, or I'm in the middle of a story or something, um, I personally would rather not have like a comment pop up. Like someone someone posts a comment and like makes me all insecure, and then all of a sudden I lose my focus and I, I forget the story or something. So the the way I think that it'll be fair for everyone is we'll we'll start at the beginning engage with the chat for a bit, and then when we start the podcast, I'll have the chat kind of off to the side, 
and I'll, you know, we'll talk for a little bit, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll take another, like, all right, let's take a little chat commercial break, and then go back, and we'll engage in the chat that way. That way, also, if people are listening here uh, just with the audio, um, they're not... Um, having to listen to a podcast where a guy gets interrupted every five seconds because someone followed the channel, you know, that's probably not very fun to listen to audibly. So I think that's a good way to do it, to break it into little commercial breaks. Uh, so for those that are listening um, to this podcast not live and maybe want to skip through those parts, or if they want to listen to it, I'll be reading the comments so they, they understand the context of what's being asked in the chat, and then I'll answer it then. I think that's everything. Cool? Oh, one additional thing. Uh, normally, if I was doing a podcast uh, on my Twitch channel, we have uh, alerts that pop up. So if someone like donates or follows the stream or anything like that, something pops up. They will pop up on here too, but I do have the audio for those muted. Um, again, that's for uh, podcast listeners. So while I'm in the middle of a story, they don't hear like, too hype, like pop up every five seconds because someone donated money. And <laughs> I, you know, uh, it, it's all for the audible uh, so that it's fair for both users, but it will still pop up. And during the commercial breaks, uh, that's when I'm going to look at the list of all the donations during that chunk and thank all of them. <sighs> How's it going, guys? <laughs> Let me pull up the chat. Let me pull up the chat here. All right. Lots of viewers. Good to see you guys. I, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and thank um, some people who have already um, done a little bit of donating here. Um, oh, I apologize. I'm going to have to pull up another tab here. There were a few users who already became paid uh, YouTube members uh, before the stream started. So I'm going to pull up in that list. I thought I had it open, but let me just grab that now. So I can properly thank you guys for... Uh, joining as a member because they haven't uh they didn't do it live okay uh so thank you to joman 66 isaiah strebens stebens <laughs> your name on patreon was strebens i've always been calling you strebens isaiah stebens sorry and uh naders 305 for becoming uh uh youtube members for the first time so i need like a da da <laughs> so thank you very much uh in addition i see uh Oh yeah, I can pull up the super chats here. Okay, so I'm still getting used to YouTube, so bear with me here. I do apologize, but super chats. It looks like uh, Isaiah. Oh, same guy, Isaiah Stebbins. I donated five dollars and typed "Ye Donos." Thank you very much. Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you. Thank you very much for the support. I really appreciate that. Um, let me try to catch up with chat here a little bit. So this is again like the commercial break. So if you're listening to this audibly in your car and you don't want to listen to me, you know, engaging with the chat that you can't see visually, I'll read the comments out loud. Um, but you may, you know, this may be a part that you want to like skip through. Like when I listen to like a Joe Rogan podcast or um, any podcast that like, welcome to the podcast. Today's sponsors are in the next five minutes or just like commercials. Uh, yeah, on my Android phone, it's like skip 30 seconds, skip 30 seconds, skip, 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 skip. Today's guest, and then I start from there. <laughs> so I think that's how that'll go for uh, this one as well. So hello, everyone. Uh, Vida says, I've been walk watching your stream or been watching your content since your drunk virtual reality driving days on your old Emart channel. That's right. I used to do virtual reality content on a YouTube channel called Emart 5. That was my personal like childhood YouTube channel, and I did a lot of uh, Oculus Rift content on there. Um, and I did a, a drunk driving in uh, a virtual video game virtual reality uh video which was uh it got some views so that was cool welcome uh do to do let's see it's good to see such people are worthy of attention says a uh, russian follower not sure what that means but welcome to the stream <laughs> uh hello hello uh hey eric night saw your notification on youtube oh hey what's up ellie Hey, I, I, I meant to reply to you. I'm sorry. I was so busy doing this, but you're asking how's Twitch going? Well, I was so busy getting this ready um, that this this is it. I was getting uh, getting ready to do some YouTube stuff. So here's your answer. <laughs> if you're still here. Takoyaki is the best, says Nick Huddy. Takoyaki is super good. Uh, oh, Ellie, you like my new camera? Thank you so much. She said, I your eyes twinkle in your new camera. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, no Manscaped sponsor, um, no sponsors yet, but I have you guys, so that's okay. Uh, what is today's topic? Yes, so today's topic, I, I gotta be honest, I spent so much time, uh, getting this, this stream ready and getting all the, like, technical, you know, it's just a little different than what, than my Twitch setup, so I just had to make sure it all works. It's very different than how you do a Twitch stream, um, on YouTube. I think it's really cool, um, but on the back end, it's a little bit, um, 
I don't want to say complicated, but there's a little learning curve that I had to learn. Uh, so I, I was doing so much of that the last few days that now that I've turned on the stream, it's like, oh yeah, what are we talking about? But it's it's been so long since I've seen you guys. I think naturally, let's just catch up. Um, you know, it's it's more I just need to think of like, where do I start? Because it's been so long since I've seen a lot of you guys. So we'll, we'll kind of just start talking about probably um, the last two years, what I've been up to. Uh, I've been doing mostly uh, Twitch live streams here in Japan. Um, and a lot of YouTube viewers... Um, don't watch Twitch because it's very different, and I totally understand that. Um, so I want to talk about that too because I'm not done doing Twitch either. Um, I just think that YouTube is a good website for a certain type of content, and so is Twitch. So now that I have like a big variety of content, I think I have a way to put good content here on YouTube while also still putting out a different type of kind of variety content that's in like a longer format over on Twitch. So I'll talk about that. That's what we're going to be discussing a lot, I think, in today's podcast. I'm going to try to keep this one about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, as uh, YouTube, I think it's it's good to have your uh, your videos and your live streams a little bit shorter and condensed uh, rather than like super long form so that they're still palatable um, when you're watching it when it's not live. Like if you if you stumble upon it a year from now, you could still maybe listen to it and enjoy it. Okay. So I, one thing I just noticed is YouTube is asking me, hey, someone typed a comment, but there's a swear word. Would you like to allow this comment? I'm going to have to somehow see if there's a setting where I can just make it so that it's uh, automatically yes. Because <laughs> I don't really mind if there's swear words on here personally. Um, that's just funny. Someone someone typed in, God damn it. And I ha it said like, do you want to allow this comment? <laughs> and I had to manually click yes. I wonder if mods as well can do that. Uh, we have moderators on... Uh, Oh, Nest, good to see you, by the way. How's it going, man? Nest is a viewer on my Twitch channel. Well, well, well. Good to see you, buddy. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, we have moderators on the Twitch channel that are also going to be moderators on this channel. I'm just going to have the same moderators help me out if and when they are willing. If we need more moderators that aren't on that, like, we need more that you like that watch YouTube a little bit more, um, I, I'll post a bit in my Discord about that, and we'll figure that out. We have a lot to talk about today, but I'm just right now spending the first 5-10 minutes to... Uh, yeah, do that kind of a commercial break, interact with the chat, and then we'll officially start the podcast. So just catching up with you guys here. See right here, like Brody's Gaming Hub typed in shite, I'm late, and, it, and YouTube blocked it. <laughs> so now I, I let it in. That's so funny. Uh, now everyone's going to type in swear words automatically, right? And flood my, uh, my mod thing here. Okay. Braden said, disappointed he didn't wear one of his iconic shirts for such an important debut. What's wrong with the Columbia tea? I love this shirt. Although now that I'm turning on the stream, I just noticed there's like a stain on it. I just bought this shirt. It's a, ugh. it's very, it's a very small stain, but uh, it's right there. I just noticed it. That's bothering me. Uh, just got back, just got off work. Be back soon. Hey, what's up, Naders? Welcome, man. Naders is, you can see he's got a Takoyaki badge, so he's a special member. Oh, do I have a chew hype? Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you. See, normally, normally on a normal stream, there'd be like a big, 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 big audible notification. So for those listening, they're like, what just happened, Eric? Ellie, you in the chat just donated 5,000 yen. Oh my God. She said, congratulations on your debut. I hope you come back to Fukuoka soon. Absolutely. I, I had so much fun hanging out in Fukuoka. Um, Ellie, first, before I say anything, fucking thank you. Fucking thank, you. fucking thank you. I need a more I need more of like a like holy shit sound effect queued up because that's not fair. The the lack of sounds I just did. I apologize. Um thank you Ellie. If you guys are just listening, she just donated 5000 yen, which is equivalent to 50 bucks, 50 bones. Oh my god. <laughs> you did not have to do that. Well, uh Ellie, uh, her and I used to work at the same English company. I won't say which one, but we used to work at the same company. Um, different branches, though. And um, we did a live stream with her in Fukuoka. She was really nice, really cool. Um, and uh, Ellie, if you want to plug your Instagram or anything, let me know. I don't mind doing that. <laughs> I don't mind selling out. <laughs> uh, today's sponsor is Ellie. And her Instagram is... She, she does a lot of, like, professional uh, Instagram stuff, so thank you so fucking much. That is super, again, not required and not expected, but always very appreciated, and that's that's insane. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Well, that should, I think that's going to live, I, so now that you can see it on the top of the chat there, those who are watching the podcast, I think because it was such a high amount, it literally sits up there for, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> so she's, like, literally at the top of the chat right now for a while. That is so cool. 
Uh, PVP Sheep is one of the moderators, and he's here in the chat. Hello, hello. He says, yo, yo. Uh, JMG said, I thought this channel was dead. The YouTube channel has been on, on a bit of a hiatus, which is what we're going to talk about. Um, most people watching here from the Twitch viewership, they already know all of this, so it's going to be kind of a broken record, repeated stories, but I hope you still find it interesting. Um, how do I check, by the way, how long we've been going? Um, I'm new to the YouTube one. We've been going for 20 minutes technically already. All right, I got I to gotta speed up. So let's read a few more comments, thank a few more people, and then uh, we're going to actually start like the podcast, and now I'm going to kind of discuss what I've been up to, um, but also kind of uh, some plans I have moving forward that I'm very excited about getting back into YouTube, and also why I haven't been on YouTube. I ha actually have a reason. <laughs> it's not that I didn't want to, but there was actually reasons for it. Uh, taking off your shirt would be fine. I think YouTube isn't as strict as Twitch. On Twitch, you can't take off your shirt as a guy, unless you're like at the beach. You can't just rip off your shirt. You'll get banned. I think on YouTube, maybe we could uh, we could do that, huh? No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, Incredible India says, Namaste. Hey, I actually did some meditation this morning. I should have said namaste a few times. Mm. I've been getting really into meditation. And, uh, I was super nervous starting the stream just because I was like, oh, I'm, I, hope, I was really worried I was going to fuck something up. Uh, Jaden says, I've seen a $500 donation before and it lasted like forever. <laughs> I think you'd have, you'd be obligated to stream as long as that lasts, right? That's funny. Okay. Brody's Gaming Hub says, when you get the chance, can you mod me? It's Kenta from Twitch. Oh yeah, that's you. Uh, can I do that now? Can I have another mod do it? Um, remind me on the discord. I'll do it after this stream. Is that okay? Ellie the legend. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Let's do it afterwards. Welcome, welcome. Do we have a guest? Uh, no guest today. No guest today. Most most of the podcasts I've done, I think actually all of them, most of them that I've done on this channel have just been kind of a personal just... Uh, actually, when I started the podcast originally, um, it was because I was making videos from Japan, but then I had to go back to America to finish my my graduate... or my, Not graduate, but my, uh, my bachelor degree. Um, and while I was back home in America, you know, I couldn't shoot any new content for from from Japan. So rather, I thought I was I thought it'd be cool to do a weekly podcast and discuss like specific stories and um how I learned Japanese and you know as kind of like a um you know, in the meantime until I got back to Japan. But then when I got back to Japan, I'm going to discuss this in a moment. Um the YouTube channel kind of had to take a pause because I I was too busy. I simply couldn't do it. And now I'm in a better position where we can do it and I'm I I can't be happier. I'm really excited. All right. Um Ironhide60 says, hey, I've been watching for a while, man. Glad to see you back on YouTube. Thank you. It's good to be back. The resurrection as a YouTube channel has begun, says Sebastian. Uh, yeah, so this will be a little interesting. Uh, again, like interacting with chat. And I think that's why it's going to be good to have these kind of like, all right, sponsor, like like commercial breaks. Um, so that while I'm in the middle of telling a podcast, I, I, I don't get too distracted by the chat. It's not that I'm, I want to ignore the chat. It's that I think we should wait and like, you know, if you have a question to ask, we can wait and ask it at certain segments during those commercial breaks when I'll actually see the comment. You can just call me Jay, says Jaden. Sounds good. Uh, your audio only listeners won't be able to appreciate your shirtlessness, <laughs> says Brandon Barton. You'll need to describe your fantastic physique orally. Oh, wow. That whole, that whole, that entire comment was a little erotic. Um, Incredibles India says in uh, in Japanese, Anata wa doko, ni, uh, doko kara kita, uh, which in Japanese means where where did you come from? Boku wa Oregon shu toyu shu, Portland toyu machi kara kimashita. I came from Portland, Oregon, in uh, USA, uh, from America. Yeah, the, the, the super chat stays on the stream for a while. I think on the stream, it only stays for two minutes. Streamlabs won't allow it. I actually wanted it to stay longer, but it, it stays on there until someone else, uh, you know, donates something else. Wow, I'm, I'm actually very surprised with the amount of viewership. Uh, right now, we have just under 50 viewers right now. So thank you so much, you guys. Uh, this is so cool. Let's read a few more comments. And then I think uh, we're going to start the podcast. So we'll basically just switch to a different... It's the same looking scene. I'm going to kind of change this as we move forward, probably in future podcasts. Right now, it just wipes the chat away. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go into a story, talk about some stuff. And when I hit a breaking point, we'll take a commercial break, come back and read the chat. Sound good? Okay. Janessa Ann Rose says, I feel like I've missed out on a lot since I didn't go on Twitch. Okay. Yeah, and again, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit and also maybe showing where you can maybe watch some of that content if you do want to kind of brush up on it. But um, let's talk about that in a second. Um, Incredibles India says, I'm missing Tokyo. That makes one of us. 
<laughs> I love Osaka. No, Tokyo's fine, but... Uh, Crocesis says, yo, Eric, hello. Uh, JMG said, are you used to minimal living in Japan yet? That's a good question. Uh, I would definitely say that my... I mean, I have a lot of stuff. I, I collect a lot of video games, which is uh, some content that I definitely want to be doing in the future on the YouTube channel. Um, as long as it's related to Japan. Let's... I want to talk about all this stuff. I have so many uh, ideas that I think are going to be fun. Um, other than the stuff that I collect, like video games and buying like camera gear and like stuff like that, my life's pretty li pretty minimal. I, I'm now actually like, I used to buy and cook a bunch of different, you can see, uh, audio listeners cannot see, but uh, let me, how do you, chat, how would you describe my, my wonderful kitchen here in my, uh, my, my, uh, my tiny studio apartment. This is the whole kitchen. It's got one electric uh, little stove top, a tiny mini fridge, and a small sink. And that's it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to cook elaborate meals, but I've had, to, I've had to get creative. I used to buy and cook and try to do a lot of like different ingredients there, but um, recently I've actually been very, I've very simplified my, my, my meals down. Almost every day I kind of eat the same thing. I cook uh, chicken, rice, garlic, and broccoli and I just fry it in a pan with like salt pepper and garlic and eat that it's healthy it's got you know protein uh tastes good I feel good when I eat it and when I go to the grocery store I don't have to think too much I just go there chicken broccoli eggs rice and that's been my diet it's pretty it's uh mentally kind of nice because I don't have to think about it very much with with corona I used to eat out so much right I used to go out and eat uh doing live streams and go out and eat it at a bunch of different restaurants um, now that I'm cooking for myself, I found it fun cooking different meals every day, but it was kind of stressful because you have to like, remember like, okay, what ingredients do I need? I got to buy butter. I got to buy this. I got to get heavy cream if I'm making pasta sauce. And like, it just got annoying. I'm like, I'm just going to buy chicken and eggs. It's cheaper anyway. <laughs> and it tastes pretty good. Um, uh, JMG said, I hit the like button and you should too. I agree. <laughs> Simple and elegant. So, oh, they're describing my kitchen. Uh, one person uh, wrote, it's simple and elegant. That's a very flattering way to put it. I'd say it's a tiny as shit. Uh, are you going to, uh, Jaden says, are you going to be uh, like that one abroad in Japan guy on YouTube? Oh, abroad in Japan? He's great. I'm a big fan. You need a bigger kitchen, says Ellie. Yeah, um, I have a girlfriend and her and I are talking about moving in together uh, sometime next year. We're probably, this could be for another another story or another podcast, but we're, we're thinking about moving more into the countryside. Right now I live in downtown, uh, which was much more helpful when I was doing uh, Twitch live streams every day, running around in the city and not having to worry about take a last train at midnight. Um, I could stay out as late as I wanted. Nowadays I'm pretty settled down. I got a girlfriend, Corona's out and about, so I'm not really going out anyway. Um, I don't really have the, 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 the need to be downtown and paying extra rent to be down here. I, I love living in this area, but I'm just not taking advantage of it because of uh, COVID. So we're, we're thinking about moving more into the countryside, moving forward and getting like a big place for like way cheap. You can, we're, I think we're seriously going to cut our rent almost into a third, like, and we're going to live together. So we share the rent there. Like it's going to be super cheap and it's going to be really big. So I'm excited for that. We get a bigger kitchen there too. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> JMG described my kitchen as it looks like a hole in the wall. Literally. Do you have a microwave? Asked Brandon. It's kind of weird. My girlfriend, uh, she keeps, uh, she keeps getting mad at me or at least like scolding me. Like, why do you not have a microwave? I actually don't have any excuse. I just haven't had one and I haven't needed it. I, 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 it, the only time it sucks is if I want to like reheat something. Obviously I have to do it by stovetop, which is terrible. I don't advise anyone do it, but because I haven't had a microwave up to this point, I'm almost like proud that I haven't, so I'm just gonna like keep going. <laughs> it's like a marathon. I don't know. I guess when I move in with her, we'll have a microwave, so I'll just wait for that. Um, uh, Mark Panther says, I, I recall you doing one cooking stream. Uh, you need to resume that. Yes, so I'm gonna be talking about that in this uh, today's podcast as well. Um, the different types of content that I think is gonna work well here on YouTube for live streaming. Um, okay, I promise. Last couple comments, and we gotta, we gotta, we gotta start this here. Um, Ellie says, you should try boiled eggs, broccoli, and rice with soy sauce and goma buddha. Ooh, that's, uh, that's, uh, sesame oil, right? Yeah. That sounds awesome. Okay, I'll keep, I'll keep a mental note. Thank you again for the support, Ellie. It's really good to see you. Um, we'll definitely have to link up and do some Fukuoka action. Uh, last question. I promise, last one. JMG asks, uh, do you plan to stay in Japan or move back to America in the foreseeable future? 
I can answer that for a long time. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, uh, five year plan, probably still in Japan. Five years, I'll probably still be here in Japan. Um, I do kind of have a dream though to move back to the U.S. And if uh, uh, Jenny and I, my girlfriend, if if things get more serious and we decide to stay together, I would love to take her with me to the U.S. So that's obviously going to come with a lot of hurdles to get over, um, and uh, you know, making sure she's okay with that and all that stuff. I the dream is to move to America personally. Um, I have some ideas which we can talk about later. Um, but uh, for the foreseeable future, right now, I'll be here in Japan. Let's pause there get into the podcast and at the next commercial break uh we'll read other questions so if i miss any questions that you guys type again i'm not ignoring them we just have to start the podcast for audible listeners thank you for your patience and um again uh this is kind of an experiment and kind of a test stream so if you guys have any uh criticism please leave them in the comments uh let us know and join the discord if you guys look in the uh description below we have a discord chat channel where you guys can join and hang out there if you guys can't stay for the whole stream um and you can you know uh hang out with us in there with that being said guys i'm gonna go ahead and uh move the chat here i feel bad doing this but let's start the podcast okay there we go. It's 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 uh it's great to see so many people interacting in the chat, but it, it's hard to find a point where it's like, okay, I gotta no, nope, I gotta not read that one and just start the streams. I feel kind of bad. Um, so let's see. Um, where should we start? Um, yeah. So again, if you guys are new, a lot of what I'm saying is gonna be kind of weird out of context. Um, but welcome. <laughs> again, my name is Eric, and I live here in Japan. Living here for four years. Um, I'll I'll do like a quick rundown of um life in japan so far if i had to like write it as like a you know like a biography like really really quick timeline of what happened basically i moved to japan and you'll actually see this reflected in uh my youtube videos where it's like <laughs> it's kind of funny i have a lot of videos where it's like i'm i'm studying abroad in japan check this out i'm here in japan i'm having so much fun learning the language the people this is so cool i can't wait to live here and then like videos leading up to moving to japan like i got my passport i got my visa like we're going this is so cool woo and then the next video <laughs> is like my job in japan sucks ass <laughs> so it's like and then and then for like a year there was no content so people probably watching uh the youtube channel probably thought like oh my god he moved to japan and like he hated it you know that's probably what people thought and i felt i felt bad and tried to uh in in the best way without having to upload a video let people know that i'm like you know still around like i do a lot of instagram interactions on stories and stuff which i guess youtube does stories now so maybe i should do that now um there's so much uh, the social media stuff dude it's too much but it, it's pretty fun when you're running a channel um it's a good way to help promote your stuff but like in everyday life i don't i'm not a big social media guy i don't really do it too much um just yeah anyways um so a lot of people that were like getting excited for me you know or or maybe i inspired them to maybe come to japan or sparked an interest in their interest in japan or they just enjoyed watching the content from you know wherever they live about japan and then they see me like come to america come to japan and it's like oh i can't find an apartment uh my uh, my job sucks blah, blah, blah. so quick timeline basically uh I'm, I'm even trying to remember on the top of my head but basically um i moved here got a job that was lined up before i got here long story short i could go into that later but i've i've made videos about that podcast i think previously um but if again if you want to ask about that ask it in the next commercial break that's fine um but i got a job before i came to japan so i had that all lined up but i didn't have an apartment lined up so i i got here and i was living in an airbnb and i don't think my my boss at the time really understood my situation i was like hey so like you know i'm moving here so like where am i gonna live because i can't pay like rent i can't pay this like hotel every day and they're like oh well how much are you paying I was like, well, it's this much, like, a week. They're like, can you extend it? I'm like, uh, I'd have to, like, bounce between places. They're like, well, how, like, they, they were, like, really postponing it for some reason, which was frustrating. And um, I basically said, like, yo, you need to help me find an apartment. Like, this kind of sucks. So, like, they they basically, I feel like he was a nice guy. But, like, looking back, they really did, like, the least amount of effort to help me out. Um, he, had hot, he had assigned a lady that works in his office um, that I'd never met. Uh, to go around with me going to real estate offices in Japan. <sighs> Man, I could go on that for a while. Japan, as you may or may not know, is very, very... As much as it's advanced with, like, technology and it embraces, like, robots and Gundams, life-size Gundams and Godzilla and all that shit and Sony cameras, 
Nintendo's great. All that's awesome. Everything else is very old school. Everything. It's all paper cash. No credit cards. No debit cards. Uh, internet usually is pretty bad. Um, now fiber optic internet is like a new thing, which I'm using right now, which is awesome. Um, it's all ve- they 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 still use fax machines. People are still using payphones outside. You'll see salary men on the train with their flip phone for their 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 you know social calls and then a smartphone for work. Like it, it's there's just a lot of really like backwards um, things. And, uh, so for me, when I'm looking for like apartments and stuff in America, obviously I go online, you know, I type in like, you know, affordable apartments in this area and then you call them and have a meeting and kind of check a few places and go from there. So I asked my boss, I'm like, Hey, I found like, cause I had done a ton of research before I got to Japan. Cause I was like, okay. You know, I, I was so excited. Um, I thought it was only smart for me to look for an apartment before. So I sent him like five apartments. Like, Hey, like, um, you know, <clears throat> obviously like I'm not fluent in Japanese, but I found these five apartments. The rent seems great. The location seems great. Um, I'm going to send them to you now. Let me know what you think. And like, let's, let's try to contact these people. Like, can you help me contact them? And we can, you know, ask them more about the, you know, the situation and see if I can get in. And he immediately replied saying like, Oh, I don't use online for finding apartments. So let's not do that. It's like, okay, so I'd spent like, you know, weeks looking for apartments and translating a bunch of stuff and figuring out what I want to do f- as far as an apartment. And then he's just like, no, we don't, I'm not going to do that. I was like, okay. So I had assumed when I got to Japan, he was at least going to help me out. So when I got here, it was kind of like, you know, I was just, you know, and let's be, let's be honest. I was so excited to come to Japan. I was kind of like, let's just worry about it when I get there. I'm going like, I just need to get there in one piece. And, um, that was my only concern really. And then when I got there, he was just like, oh, yeah, you need a place. Okay. Uh, so where are you staying right now? Okay. Um, can you stay there longer? No. Okay. Mm, uh, okay. And he like assigned some lady to go with me. And we went around to one. We went to one real estate office. He was like, you have one day to find an apartment, basically. All right. He didn't say it like that, but that was the vibe, right? He was like, all right, so you and her are going to go for one day and um, she's going to find you an apartment. Not like like let's like you can go with her for a few days this week and try some of the places out it's like you kind of have one chance here so that was a ton of pressure like shit like i can't even like take my time here like this is kind of crazy so how it works is you go into this office super old school and say like hi i would like an apartment in such and such area they sit you down with a guy and then the first thing the guy does is he pulls up his computer and goes online (laughs) i was like what the fuck all the stuff he pulled online was completely available online or maybe like his server that he had was exclusive to like in-person interactions but like the first thing he did was go online i'm like well fuck like that was the whole whatever so he goes online and he's like well what do you think of this place and that that was it like he was just like so what do you think i'm like oh uh well, can you like describe it? He's like, oh yeah. So it's this size and this is the rent. I'm like, so I just make a decision based on this. This is kind of crazy. And he's like, well, like, let's find like, like three or four places here online. And then I'll take you there today. Like in our car, we'll go take you around and we'll find you a place. So of course you see where this is going, where he's helping us out. By the time we find an apartment, the longer it takes to find one, the more expensive it was. Cause this guy's driving us around and he's taking his time to help us get a place. So there's pressure from my boss because I only have this assistant to help me for one day. You know, I speak Japanese on like a conversational level, but not fluently to like sign contracts. So I'm with, I'm under pressure to do it within a day. And then I'm under pressure because like it's going to cost more money the longer I take to spend with this guy. So he takes us to like four apartments and one of them was really cool. I like, or let's just say they were all kind of like, eh, like this is too small. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I like this area. Like this building's kind of shitty. Like it's kind of run down. Like, why is it so cold in here? There's like a draft. Like I didn't. And then there was one place that was actually really nice. Um, it was my first apartment that I live streamed in. It was actually, this is funny. It was a renovated love hotel. Uh, if you don't know what a love hotel is, I'll, I'll welcome you to Google that. Uh, they're a type of hotel in Japan to make love (laughs) and it was in a rundown area of town that used to be very like nightlife city kind of think of las vegas kind of vibes that is no longer that it like went through some sort of uh you know economic you know i guess probably after the the economic bubble in the 80s in japan burst that's probably around when it started to run down in that area and so that building got converted into a normal apartment but it's so funny because when you go in the door is made of like glitter (laughs) and there's like there's like a swan fountain in the entrance and then when you uh you go into the apartment and you go into the bathtub to take a bath there was a tv in there like a small little screen because it's supposed to be like a sex hotel (laughs) 
<laughs> it was like, but that was the nicest apartment I found. So I'm like, okay, so this, this one's actually like a really good size, you know, it's kind of fancy looking. And in my head too, I wanted a space that I could use for, for YouTube. Cause at the time I was like, I'm in Japan. I've been off YouTube for two weeks. I got to get going. Like we gotta, we gotta go. So I, and, but I also wanted like, a, like, I was like, okay, even if this one has a more expensive rent, I should probably go for it because it's a wider space. It'll allow me to get more, you know, have more space for creative uh, video ideas and things like that. Um, and, uh, so, uh, I asked them the price and the rent amount was about a thousand dollars a month. Now I come from Portland, Oregon and any city you live in, that's like Portland, the rent in any city like that is usually around that. It's about like 800, 900 thousand dollars. Like it's not cheap, but I had figured like, okay, well I'm teaching English, but also doing YouTube, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing video work. Like I, I think I can justify the extra money kind of treating it as like an office space. Like I'm paying an extra two, three, four hundred dollars a month for an office because this will be my office. Now let's fast forward a couple months. So I, 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 I signed the contract and they were all a little hesitant too. They were like, are you sure? Like this is cause by Japan standards, a thousand dollars a month for a single apartment. is crazy. It's very expensive. Um, you know, unless you're really well off, there's no reason to be paying that much. You don't have to. The apartment I live in right now, I won't say where it is exactly, although I'll be moving from it later, but just for uh, privacy sake, but I pay, how much do I pay? 500 plus utilities or is it 550? Something like that. But like when my rent comes in with all the utilities, like my, my, you know, uh, gas and water and, um, all the electricity and all that, it's usually around 700 bucks, maybe it's 650 in American USD converted, which I think is pretty good. It, it's not the cheapest, but $650 to live downtown. Pretty cool. Um, I, I like the situation I'm in now, uh, just I'm skipping the story, but where I'm living now is a great situation. Um, and, uh, guess where I found this apartment? on the internet god damn it <laughs> if i had just used the internet the first time we would have been totally fine but my boss like refused and suggested that we we go in and use a proper fudosan which is a real estate agent Whew. so i decided to go with a nicer apartment despite my boss being like you sure like that's pretty pricey i'm like well all the other apartments that didn't i don't really like them i don't have a good I, you're putting me under this pressure anyway i'm going with the one that i think that feels right let's do it well very soon, I realized, well, with my paycheck at that first teaching job, I was not making very much money. I think I was getting paid working like six days a week, like six day, like Monday through Saturday, like 10 hour days. Um, that job sucked ass. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having like PTSD. Um, the first job, my, I think my salary was, how much would it have been a month? 1700 a month. And my rent was like a thousand plus utilities, plus internet, plus groceries. So like 80% of my money was just going toward my freaking apartment. So very soon I had, you know, it, you know, and I was, I was young and this is kind of a life lesson and this is advice for anyone. Always get something cheaper if you can. I think, I hope I can give some good advice um, out of this because I, I definitely learned the expensive way um, not to rush into anything. And if, if your boss only gives you a day, you got to put your foot down and be like, yo, I need more time. This is crazy. So I wish, well, I learned from it though. So, but basically after like two or three months, I realized like I can't afford this financially. And to be honest, I was working so many hours. I didn't even have time for YouTube anyway. I was super stressed out, super anxious. Like I gotta be honest and this might sound depressing. It was though. I was working so much and having so many like mental, like, you know, kind of just like, oh my God, I made it like, what am I doing here? Cause the job was just not a good English teaching job. It wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't thought out. Um, basically I was put in a room with a bunch of kids and they said like, here's a computer and here's a printer, make some lessons and have fun. I'm brand new to English teaching. I don't know how to teach English. I just speak the language. Um, so it was miserable. I didn't know what I was doing. It was frustrating. It was tiring. Um, it was more like a daycare and I was getting paid nothing, working way too much, doing almost no work. Um, it was depressing. So there was days literally where I would wake up so exhausted and so stressed about just like, oh my God, I can't even YouTube. I'm like going into debt. This job sucks. That literally, I remember for about, uh, <laughs> there was a few days on my way, like on my way to work. I'm like, I, I think I'm seriously going to have a panic attack. I literally, dude, this is bad. I literally, on, like before going to work, pulled out the biggest uh, wine glass I had, filled it to the brim and chugged it. Maybe not to the brim, maybe halfway. I was so stressed though. Like I couldn't calm down. It was like I needed a cigarette or something and I don't smoke. So I was just like, fuck. And I just poured a glass of wine, chugged it, 
got on my bike and went to work. And that was the only thing that could calm me down for an hour just to get there. It was bad. So let's fast forward because life in Japan now, I just want to like preface this. If you guys are like, God damn, like, do I even want to go to Japan? Life in Japan right now is awesome. Besides COVID, that's inevitable. That's not like in anyone's hands. My life in Japan compared to that time is so much better. It just took time. Um, so I, I want to encourage you guys, first of all, just that um, if you do if you do get here and you're really stressed out and bummed out, there there's always better ways to um, get out of situations. And I hope I can help at all with any advice if you guys have specific questions. Um, but hopefully anything I say here can help you out as well. So let's fast forward a bit. Super depressing. Fucking sucked. That apartment was terrible. Um, and in order to cancel my contract with that apartment, the lease, I guess I was on a lease for, I think a year, they charged me, I think $2,500 USD to cancel it. But the next apartment I found, I found it on the internet. I found like three apartments on the internet since that place. God damn it. <laughs> So I'm still bitter looking back though. Honestly that I, I gotta be fair that the boss actually at my first job was not an asshole Not a mean person. He was just very um, I think he's just very traditional Japanese guy very kind But I just don't think him and I related very well like he didn't really understand my stress He was like wait Why is working like seven days a week stressing you out? Like he didn't get it and I, I had to be like this is I'm not used to this like and they're like, okay Well, we'll give you like one day off a, a month or something like that I was like, well, thanks, but that doesn't really help, you know, so we, we couldn't really come to like an agreement or I just couldn't get out of the stress personally. So I had actually looked for another job. Uh, the person who donated in the super chat again, thank you again. Shout out to Ellie. Uh, the next company I worked for, she also worked there at a different branch. Um, I had found a job, um, through word of mouth. Someone said, Hey, you should come work for this company. It's, it's also full time, but it pays better. Um, it's mostly English speaking like staff and the, the hours are definitely better. Um, so I ended up, uh, landing a new job and telling my boss like, Hey, I have to quit it. That was, that was kind of scary. I think I made a video about quitting my job in Japan. If you guys check out, um, previous podcasts, I think the last podcast before this one, number 20, I think was about quitting the job. So it probably has all the info in there. So sorry if I'm repeating myself here, but, uh, I'm kind of going down through, uh, going through memory lane here. And, um, but, uh, so I found a better job, told my boss, Hey, you've been super kind to me and I appreciate everything. But I honestly, I'm, uh, just not happy here. This I'm really stressed out. And he was, he kept asking why he was like, he was trying to make it work. He kept giving me like different options. Like, well, what if we do this? And I was like, I'm really sorry. And I, I, it was really, you know, it's hard to put your foot down and just be like, and not come across as a jerk. Like I, I want to nice fully have a clean break and I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so happy I did the day I left. It was like a huge weight off my shoulder. I knew I was doing the right thing. Um, so I got out of, Oh, so while working there, um, I found a new apartment. I looked on Craigslist, which I suggest highly if you're in Japan to look on Craigslist, because the only people who use Craigslist in Japan are generally foreigners. So it's great because if you're a foreigner wanting to move to Japan, it can be hard. Um, some, believe it or not, some apartment buildings in Japan will not accept you if you are a foreigner because they do not want to there. And I, at first that used to bug me. I was like, well, that's kind of racist, right? But it's there, there's reasons for it. Um, cause a lot of people will come to Japan, get an apartment and then they have to like go home suddenly and they'll just leave, uh, without cleaning the apartment. They leave it a mess. They don't pay the rent. They just like leave and they don't know where they go. So there's some reasons behind it. Um, but it's obviously frustrating because you're like, well, I'm, you know, I'm living here. I want to, I want to pay the rent, but you have to find like a guarantor Japanese person to kind of sponsor you. And so like, if you leave, then he's held responsible and they actually do have companies that will like be a guarantor for you. Like that's a thing, but you have to pay money. Um, yada, yada, yada went on Craigslist and I found someone, uh, she was half Korean, half Japanese born and raised in Japan. She says, hi, I live in a small townhouse, three stories with two dogs. Um, we have like three extra bedrooms, but it's just me in the house. Um, I rent this house from a friend. She owns the house, but she doesn't live there. It's just me. Um, I'm looking for a roommate, maybe two roommates to help split the rent. That house was a much bigger space, a proper size kitchen in a fantastic area. It was right next to this river, uh, that had like a jogging path next to it. It was beautiful. It was, uh, in Suminoe, which is, uh, it's just a, a district here in Osaka. Um, it's, it's got a, uh, I think it's the Yodogawa river right there. Which river is it? Maybe it's not Yodogawa. It's like the Ogawa. It's something, something. There's a river right there. That's just really beautiful. It was a great place to kind of hang out and, uh, decompress and meditate. So I went from spending like $1,200 a month to spending like 400. She charged me $400 cash, including the utilities. So I didn't have to pay an extra for electricity. It was just $400. You're good every month. Huge house. It was awesome. 
Um, after a year of living there, though, uh, she said, hey, unfortunately, the person who owns the house, she's going to be moving back into this house. So um, within the next three months, uh, I'm going to have to ask you to find a new place to live. There was no beef there. I was totally cool with it. it was, she was awesome. Um, I, I really had a good experience there. So I was saving money by living there, and it was an upgrade, ultimately. It was awesome. Um, so from there, I needed to find a new place. Where did I find this apartment? Craigslist. Just go on Craigslist. I'm telling you. Like, it's not it's not a guarantee that you're going to find a place good. But most, of the, almost all the places posted on Craigslist are made, they're usually buildings owned by foreigners or that are at least foreign friendly. So I found a building. They're like, we've got an apartment. It's downtown. You know, it's got, it's just in a kick-ass area. Um, here's the rent. There's no guarantor fee, no whatever fee. And also here's the kicker. There's, uh, there's no lease. Like you sign the lease, but you can leave whenever you want. Just give us 30 days notice and you can leave whenever you want. There's no obligation. There's no fees for canceling. You're, you're good. I was like, holy shit. Why didn't I do this on day one? <laughs> so I blame my boss for that because he, he said not to use the internet, which was insane. Um, use the internet, find your apartment on the internet. Don't go the old school way. I mean, you can do it if you want, but I, in my experience going on the internet helped a lot. And that's also, I found, um, a lot of my work and then, um, fast forwarding. So I'm at a new job. Uh, I'm living in this apartment my previous English job. And, um, at that time I was doing a lot of Twitch streaming. Oh man. I want to, so we'll, after this story about the apartments and stuff, we'll take a, a, a commercial break. And then when I get back, I want to talk about like Twitch and my ideas for YouTube streaming moving forward. Let's save that topic for after the commercial break. Let me like make a note because <laughs> I'm going to forget, uh, after the break Twitch. Okay. So at that job, uh, although the, the pay was really good, it was still full time. So I, uh, I started doing Twitch during all of this because obviously my goal when I first got here, like you got a lot of you guys know, um, I was wanting to come to Japan and do a bunch of YouTube stuff, but I, I, I can't find a job that has enough like free hours. Um, I'm paying too much in rent. I, I was going through all this shit. I didn't have time to sit down and make a video creatively. I didn't have time to like, Hey guys, I'm having fun. Cause I, I didn't want to lie either. I was like, okay, fuck. I need to do something creatively, but that doesn't require the time that YouTube does. And, um, uh, just fast forwarding. I love YouTube so much. I love putting together a story, a video, editing a video like slowly. And you guys know my upload rate is a little slow. I'm hoping to improve that, um, moving forward and have some people help out with the channel. Um, shit story for another time. But, uh, but I love being able to do that and eventually share a video that I'm proud of. And that people were like, wow, like I can tell you put a lot of time into this and I'm not trying to like boat my skills, but I'm, you know, but I'm proud of the videos, uh, the amount of work I put into these videos. So at the time I couldn't, and it was like, fuck. Um, so what I did, um, it's actually probably on the YouTube channel. If you just go into my videos and scroll through, it's not in a playlist, but it's like just in the uploads. I did a live stream. Uh, YouTube live had just come out, you know, Twitch had existed before and I dabbled with that, um, uh, playing video games in the past, but it wasn't related to Eric abroad, Japan stuff. And so I, I took, I had a, like five gigabytes of data on a phone and I was like, let's go to the park and just do like a little live broadcast. And the, like, it kind of, I don't want to say it exploded, but it was like, it had like a hundred viewers. A ton of people were chatting. People were throwing super chat donations. And just, I was like, Oh my, wow, this is Okay. And it was, but it was new for me because I had only done video uploads up to that point. And that sparked the idea. Um, first of all, they, they said, Hey, let's make a discord channel so we can at least talk to each other when you're not uploading. I was like, good idea. Because at the time there was no community. Uh, uh, if you guys don't know on YouTube, there's a community tab on channels that where I can post things kind of like a, kind of like Facebook where you can like post a picture like Twitter, something like that people can like and comment and you can post updates and stuff. So, um, at the time that didn't exist. So there was no way to like, just for me to just kind of sit and talk with you guys. Um, so we made a discord channel. So check out the description for discord. If you guys haven't joined yet, uh, it's super fun in there. People are really nice. Um, and there's a lot of Twitch clips in there too. If you guys want to catch up on what we've been up to the last couple of years, which again, I'll uh, save that for the, after this next commercial break. Um, where am I going with this? Uh, yeah. So after we made the discord channel, people said, Hey, why have you ever considered trying Twitch? It's a much better live stream platform than YouTube. That's what they said. And, um, I kind of went with that. I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. You know, I only have like one or two days off a week rather than trying to like squeeze editing time when I'm already stressed out. Why don't we just take that day off and I can just load a camera on a selfie stick with a battery and a, a pocket Wi-Fi, And let's just go to like, go to Kyoto for eight hours and just do it live. And you know, um, it, when people donate, it financially supported the trip. Like, you know, if I, if I went to Kyoto and back, 
the train there is about $15 to get there and back probably. But we also went to a restaurant, also had a beer or two at a bar. If people are supporting during the stream, it paid for the trip. So maybe I would come home and not have made much money because I kind of spent it to do the trip, but the trip was paid for. So all of a sudden I'm like, okay, now I'm not in like in as much debt. I'm in a cheaper apartment. I'm making more money doing my English teaching gig, but on my days off, I'm also supporting these little trips I'm doing. Uh, so moving forward to my previous English teaching job after the first shitty one, I got into a new job and I'd already been doing Twitch during that. Uh, but it was such a good way for me to kind of vent. It was kind of a way to me. That was kind of the podcast for a while. Uh, the only problem with Twitch is like, like I would, I would do kind of like this podcast, right? Like we're doing now. How long have we been live by the way? An hour? Okay. I'm going to try to do an hour and a half today, but if this ends up being two hours, I do apologize. I'm going to try to keep them shorter moving forward, but I'm um, trying my best to, uh, this is the first one, so I'm going to be rambling a lot here. If you can't tell, I uh, I, uh, I like to talk. It, it never stops. Um, <laughs> um, ask Jenny about that. Um, no, but uh, so I'm at, I'm at my previous English job, and that job had a little bit better hours. I had about three days off a week, so full time, um, I'm just trying to like, uh, you know, verbally help you guys visualize it on my end. Uh, I would work four days a week doing English teaching. It was brutally tiring. Um, that company really expected less than like better than like good lessons. They just wanted you to like have really high energy for every class, like no showing up like half asleep or no, just doing the lesson. You also had to make a lesson like every week. Like they required you to do these little tasks to keep you like on your toes, which was, it was, it wasn't necessary. They just wanted to do it to kind of be the man and kind of like make you remember that you're working for them. It was, it was not fun. Um, definitely better than my first job, but it was still not fun. Uh, so it was like four really exhausting days of English teaching. And then at night after teaching all day, we would turn on the live stream. And because it was late at night, what else, what can you do at night? Go drink. That was all you could do. We would go, I'd, I'd get off work and it's like, all right, let's go to a restaurant, which was fun. We could try out different food every day, but ultimately it kind of became, it was like every day I was going out drinking, which, Hey, I like having a beer. I think drinking is fun, but after two years of Twitch drinking every day, whew, I gotta be honest, I'm off the stuff. I don't drink anymore. I mean, you know, I have a beer um, once or twice a week after work, you know, relaxing kind of like as a whatever, but I don't like go drinking very much anymore nowadays. And especially now that I have a girlfriend, I don't, I'm not going out and talking to, you know, the ladies or anything like that. I'm just, it's like, all right, I'll just have my girlfriend over and we can just drink here. <laughs> I save money anyway. Anyway, so after two years of that, as, as fun as it was to kind of be working full time, but doing Twitch full time, I had zero free time, zero free time, like outside of it. And as, as much as it might look like doing Twitch, doing IRL streaming is your free time, it's kind of not. Okay. I'll get into that in, in a second after the break, but um, where was I going with this? So at that time, teaching full time, Twitch full time, very exhausted, very kind of mentally burned out creatively, um, was kind of doing the same content every day. And, and then you'd come home and there'd be like a comment like, Hey, when are you uploading on YouTube again? And you're like, fuck. Cause there's no time. I, I was doing so, it was so hard to, I didn't have the time for YouTube. I didn't have the, it, I didn't have the proper time to dedicate to it. Um, so this is just to kind of explain why I haven't been on YouTube, but I'm not here to bash Twitch. Twitch was so much fun. There were so many good things we did on Twitch. I learned a lot, learned some mistakes. Um, and I think it's going to apply moving forward because I'm going to be doing a little bit of both moving forward. I think there's a good type of content that exists on Twitch and one that matches better for YouTube. Again, I'll get into that after this first commercial break. Um, but, uh, so after a while I kind of had to like slow down on Twitch because I was just like, Oh my God, I, I think I'm going to like, I'm just dying. <laughs> so, um, I kind of started slowing down, doing a little bit less of the outdoor IRL stuff. IRL stands for in real life. Um, the outdoor IRL stuff and doing just like playing video games in the house. I started getting more into collecting retro video games. Um, so the content got a little bit more chill, but it got a little stagnant as well. Not that I don't enjoy it, but it was like, rather than creating like high quality content, it was more like I was just kind of hanging out after work. I'm just like, Hey, what's up guys? We're playing this game. What's up? And, but it wasn't really like creatively creating a, uh, content related to Japan at all. Um, so fast forwarding to now last point before the break. Um, I, I, at that previous job, 
uh, someone I work with says, hey, I know you do Twitch stuff. Um, I actually, and I, I've heard that you kind of, you're thinking about maybe quitting after this year. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a new job. I don't know if I want to do another year of this. He goes, he was, a, he was an, uh, a British guy. He goes, mate, I, I cannot do the accent. He goes, mate, I've got a friend. He's got the perfect, <laughs> I'll stop the accent. <laughs> There's a... No more of that. No more of that. Um, <laughs> he, um, but he says like, Hey, I've got a friend. He's, uh, he's like a real, he owns a school and he's looking for a new teacher with very flexible hours. Um, that is that he, uh, he can make a schedule for you. That's going to really benefit you that you can do uh, English teaching and Twitch full time. And it's like perfect. And I was like, well, okay, I'll meet with him. So I met with him, you know, I'm not going to say names or anything. Cause it's my current employer. Um, went really well. Actually, like it went so well that I was like questioning it. I'm like, damn, what's, where's the catch here? Uh, that was the biggest blessing I've had. I think since I've got to Japan, um, having someone suggest this, this man to me, because, uh, he's like, Hey, I'm starting this new school. I've owned a lot of schools in the past, but I'm, I kind of sold my last one because, uh, he had like a partner and things were, there was some tension there and they decided to sell the school, but he was like a veteran in English teaching, very like revered, already had students lined up. He, and he's like, you don't have to make the lessons. Cause I'm, he's, he, he just said, he's like, I'm kind of a pro. So I, I'll, I, the lessons are already made. You just have to learn them and just do them. Uh, which is nice because you don't have to like mentally tire out on thinking of how to do the lesson. You can more use your mental focus during a lesson on just how to like have fun, like keep the kids entertained, make jokes, but you're still doing a lesson. And it's, it's, um, it just all seemed really good. And he said, I know you do Twitch full time. So just listen, listen, like imagine having this meeting after all, like the, my stress I was going through, like finding work and, you know, being so burnt out. He goes, basically, I'm going to have you work four days a week, which I was already doing that before, but, uh, the hours, uh, well, they're, they're eight hours technically, but he's like, but there's only, um, the lessons are only about four hours of that eight hours. The other hours will be office work because I hear you do video stuff, correct? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I need some video editing done for it's super simple, but I just don't have the time to do them. Um, I'm going to offload it onto you and you'll show up to work, do some video editing. And then when lessons start, put the computer away and do some lessons and then go home. It's like, sounds pretty, sounds pretty chill. And he said, in addition, uh, once a month, I'm going to give you a block, uh, since you only work four days a week, I'm going to give you a block where you get, how did it work? It was like, so I, I, at the time I was working Tuesday, Wednesday, I had Thursday off and then I worked, I'm doing like a weird sign Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday off. And then I worked Friday, Saturday. That was the schedule. So it was kind of nice. Cause you'd work two days, get a day off to kind of decompress, relax. Um, it was still a work, like you had to work the next day. So you couldn't go out like drinking or anything, but it was still like nice to just like, you know, rest your voice and just kind of relax. And then I'd work Friday, Saturday, but he said, uh, uh, once a month, um, <laughs> I'm doing a little hand here, uh, to show my, my, uh, week count. If you're listening here, uh, you'll, we'll give you, how was it? I'll give you Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday off once a week per month. So what that, what that becomes is you'd work, uh, you'd have Sunday and Monday off and then work one day, Tuesday, and then you'd have Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off in a row. Like if you took those days off, basically once a month, I got six days off in a row and that's still the case. And now I work even less time. So I'll get to that in just a second. Um, and, uh, so I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Because, and the reason I had asked for that, I was like, uh, was rather than have like, like, I don't know, a one, uh, I don't know. Basically I said like, I would like rather than have like one day off here, then a work day, then one day off here, then a work day. Can I just have them all in a chunk that way? If I want to go on like a trip or travel to Korea for a weekend, which is near to Japan. And that's a common trip you can do. Um, we did a live stream in Korea actually with my friend Danny. That was so much fun. Um, and that video exists on Twitch. I'll link it later or show you guys where you can find it. It's just on the Twitch page. You can find it there. But, uh, so that way it was like once a month we have the freedom to go on like some ex crazy excursion trip or just take the week off and just relax like just take six days and play games and stuff and just like whatever so this sounded perfect that was that was the schedule we started with uh a year ago and then starting in april of this year uh was when it was like renewing and he was like so you know he what's great is he he's a canadian guy and so, uh, we're on just very very healthy good communication terms if i ever have a concern um I, I voice it, but it's very fair. I'm like, Hey man, I don't know. Like, I just got to tell you like, this is kind of bothering me, but I'll use, I'll always give him like a, like an alternative or give him a suggestion to help like, like a compromise. Like, okay. So like, I don't really like this. I gotta be honest. Is there some way maybe we could do this 
or maybe if I do this, we can do this. And like, like it, we're just on very good communication terms. And he's been very vocal to me. Like, Hey, I just really appreciate that. You're like easy to work with. And likewise, same to him. He's awesome. I want to say his name, but I, I won't reveal <laughs> that just yet. But, um, he knows who he is. He's fucking awesome. And, uh, it's just, uh, so starting in April, I basically, he said, so, you know, let's just have a meeting. Uh, rather than like beat around the bush, just tell me everything you like, everything you don't like. And like, let's come up with a compromise moving forward. Cause there was no like beef, but there were some things, ideas I had in my head. I was like, all right, yeah, this is awesome. I love teaching. Um, doing this on top of Twitch has been very tiring though. Like, even though this is an upgrade from my previous job, I'm still kind of burnt out. Um, and, uh, I, I was vocal with him about this before I even started the job. I was like, you know, that my goal moving to Japan is not to teach English, correct? He's like, yeah, I know that. I was like, long term, like I didn't come to Japan to teach English. I teach English because it allowed me to come to Japan. And it's a, you know, it's uh, uh, the easiest visa. It's not that stressful a job. I actually enjoy doing the job I'm doing now. It's actually pretty enjoyable. Um, it's still tiring. And I, I still in the future, I hope to not have to do English teaching to maintain a visa um, here in Japan. But right now that is my visa. Um, but basically I said like, you know that I don't want to teach English full time. Um, is there any way like starting in, in May that, uh, I could switch to a part-time schedule? I, I do make a little bit of income doing Twitch and YouTube on the side. I do side video gigs here and there. Um, oh, another time I can chat. Um, I finally gotten to do some hired video work here in Japan as well with uh, a TV company, which is really, well, we'll, we'll say that for another one, but it's cool. Cause I'm getting paid some money to do some, uh, uh, some video work. I'll do a little cheers for that. <laughs> Cause I was excited about that. Forgive me, I gotta blow my nose here. Ah, I had a little bit of a sniffle this morning. Um, so, uh, what on earth was I talking about? Oh yeah, so I was like, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit of a supplemental income um, on my off days. I don't think I really need to rely on a full-time teaching income anymore, which wasn't that high anyway. Um, I was like, so I suggested, would it be okay if I switched from working four days a week to working only two days a week? Or maybe like, Every other week I work three days and two days, whatever, whatever works to slowly wean me off of full time into part time, whatever works for you. Um, because I think if I work part time, even with half, like if I only earn half of the, the full time paycheck, that will pay for my rent. That will pay for my, my utilities and my expenses. And then any additional income I make out on extra jobs will be like my, you know, my savings or my spending money. <clears throat> but I thought that was like, I think now's the time I can finally but, but my concern was, but I was like, I was like, so I want to, I want to switch to part time, but I understand that in Japan, there's no way to, uh, maintain a visa status if you're only working part time. And he goes, Oh, that's not correct at all. I was like, wait, what? Cause I had been told that. Cause if you, if you look for a job, I'm going to have a sip of tea here <sighs> talking right here. There's my, Jesus, <laughs> I like to talk. Um, once I get on a ramble here, uh, but basically when, if you're ever looking for a first job in Japan, uh, if you're going to want the company to sponsor your visa, I mean, unless you get a miracle situation, it's going to be a hundred percent that you have to start full time, which is I think expected from everyone. I don't think anyone expects to get a visa working only a couple days a week, but I was asking him like, is there any way I can work like three days a week, one week, and then four days, another week. And like that way it balances to full time on a technical level and I can get a visa. Long story short, he goes, no, actually as a company, uh, we're not limited. Like you could work like one day a month and we could still give you a visa. Um, as a company, depending on how much money we earn, we're allowed to give out a certain amount of visas. So he was like, with our company right now being as like the size that it is, we have X amount of visas that we can actually give out. So we like you as a teacher, even if you switched to part time, we would just have you work the two days that are the busiest, which is what I do now. I work Tuesday and Saturday only. Where's my cheers? I work two days a week. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, dude. It's so cool. Um, it might sound like a lazy thing, but it's that I, since starting that, which has only started since COVID hit, it finally started where I was able to do the part-time thing. That's why you're starting to see videos come back on the YouTube channel. That's why we're streaming right now. That's why I have a smile on my face because after three years of hoping to come to Japan and immediately tackle the YouTube grind and sharing my experience here. After three years, I finally got it to a point where I have a visa working two days a week that are super separated. So I get breaks between them anyways. The, the work is awesome. The kids are great. The, the staff is, it's just 
it's gotten so good and it didn't start this good so it might sound like wow like spoiled guy no you heard my story the beginning fucking sucked it was three years of a grind um but you know i was actively always admitting to myself there's there's probably something better there's something i can do better not that i deserve better but i think i can find it and um so i'm super 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 i i don't know what to say i'm just i'm just so happy uh that it's finally gotten to this point and um because now uh so basically in april i proposed that and he goes no actually we can give you one the problem is is you're like our main teacher right now um if you're gonna switch to part-time we're gonna have to hire some more staff um and they were they were already buying and opening up new schools um as a company they're like we're buying this new location we're looking for new staff anyways but it's gonna take about three or four months for us to maybe get that set up and so this is where he really appreciates me being flexible because i it wasn't like I was saying, I want to switch to part-time or I'm quitting. I basically said, like, if there's no chance of me switching to part-time at any point this year, I might start looking for another job or some something else with video-related visa sponsorship because, you know, I just don't want to teach English full-time. It's it's just eating up way too much of my spare time. And to be honest, I didn't come here to teach. I, can, I, I would rather go home because I can do other things at home uh, and not have to worry about a visa so much, you know? Um, so he was like, okay, cool. So he just he just asked, can we have a few months? And I was very flexible. I said, absolutely. So he was really very supportive there um, because I was able, we, we came to like a, you know, an agreement, like a compromise, you know, um, and blessing in disguise. This may out of context sound horrible, but uh, what really made the part-time work possible was uh, COVID. COVID. I, I got, I got to be totally honest with you guys. Um, despite the world falling apart life on my end it's been pretty good since covid started not saying like <laughs> that sounds so bad but like as far as like my work schedule changing and the opportunity to edit and having to stay home and all these things all started when covid hit it's like hey by the way you have to stay home all day now well, that's not so bad okay we need to uh switch you from full-time to part-time because of, of covid we just don't have the lessons okay uh, because, uh, it's COVID, we can't have you, you know, teaching with the kids in, in, in public. So we're going to, uh, you do live streaming, right? I said, yeah, I do. They're like, can you do live streaming? But like, as like, a, like an English lesson, it's like, absolutely. <laughs> so doing Twitch for two years, I learned how everything, all the ins and outs of live streaming. I know how to do it. Um, I made an English lesson. So I, for a while I was doing full time English lessons, but it was all from home. So I'd wake up, you know, lessons aren't until 2 PM, do some yoga. I, uh, I bought a fish tank. You can't see it here on the camera, but I got an awesome uh, aquascape that has been uh, become like a little, you know, side hobby of mine. I got some like some plants. I'm growing moss, <laughs> you know, just little like Zen vibes. I've made my apartment more of a sanctuary. I've upgraded my video game setup. It's all retro video games. You can see here if you're like, what is that TV? This right here, for those that can't see, I have a small 10 inch professional Ikegami uh, video monitor, uh, which is Oh man, I want to, we'll go into this on another, on another topic. These are like the highest quality monitors for retro streaming period. They're so nice. And I also have a big one right here for 480p games. We'll go into that another time. Um, but basically I've made it like my, my entertainment center, my Zen, my meditation. Uh, I get some exercise in here. I go jogging, like <coughs> jogging. I go jogging in the area, um, nearby. I actually picked up skateboarding during COVID, which has been super fun. Yo, do you guys want to see my skateboard? For those that aren't watching this or that are, uh, you know, listening, I apologize. I'll try to describe it, but give me, give me one second here. Check this out. So for those who can't see, I'm holding what, like imagine, uh, the skateboard you had after going to see back to the future in 1985, is that 85? Um, the goofy skateboards that are kind of like rockets and they have the little plastic bars on the bottom. Uh, th that's what I have. But, um, this is my skateboard. This is awesome. It's a Santa Cruz, Eric Winkowski board names, just a uh, coincidence, uh, super cool graphic, but it's, it's, it's a little bit wider. Um, and I also have uh, soft wheels on here. These are the juice wheels. They're, they're the same size of a skateboard wheel, but they're more uh, like longboard uh, cruiser board wheels. So it's like a bit heavier, a bit more of a cruiser board, but you can still do like ollies. You can still do like little tricks on it. And I'm definitely not like good, but I can ride. I can, you know, go into vert ramps and things like that. So this has actually become a great tool for exercise for me um, during COVID. Not like necessarily to like pump iron, but just to get a sweat going. And I'm not like running on a treadmill wanting to kill myself. It's like, I'm, I'm 
having fun, you know? Um, so this and and jogging and exercising in the apartment with some weights that I have um, has been uh, a, just a, a good way for me to get my endorphins going and, you know, exercise on uh, while being on lockdown. So COVID happens. I'm doing English teaching from home full time. And my boss is like, hey, like we can't switch you to part time yet, but we will have you teaching from home, which I imagine will be a little more relaxing than normal lessons because you don't have to ride the train anymore. You're just, you know, in again, in the, I mean, like literally I was wearing a button shirt and underwear. Like, hey kids, like, you know, from the bottom down, I was just in pajamas. So, uh, uh, losing my train of thought. Let me uh, have some tea and think about what I was talking about here. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> wow. Big brain fart. But basically, uh, so COVID happened and for a few months, uh, we were doing, uh, from home full-time teaching. Now that got really tiring in itself, as fun as it was to be at home. Uh, that got really old because you're doing the same lesson. It's definitely different because rather than like in real life, Kids will say things funny and it kind of distracts the class, but in a way that's fun. Like they say like a funny comment in English. You're like, oh, that's right. And then you draw like a funny picture related to that. Or you can kind of riff when it's online. They're just sitting like this, like watching you do your thing. So the whole time I'm like, hey guys, so what's this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. This is how long has it been? Five minutes. God damn. It, 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 it was like just uh, very tiring on my end for sure. Uh, but I did that, grinded that full time, and like as a thank you, my boss was like, "Hey, when we start opening back up, you're part time. You got a visa. You're working two days a week. Thank you for all your help. You're good to go." So this was just only like three months ago, I think, two months ago, that I've switched to part time, and hence why I'm talking to you now, guys. Thank you for uh, uh, being in the chat again. I'm not uh, ignoring chat per se. It's just that during the podcast moment, uh, we're saving. Uh, the chat room and reading off any donations or, uh, you know, memberships or Patreon pledges or anything like that for the commercial breaks, which we're going to do now. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, of course, uh, I may have to scroll up to see some things, but if there's any comment that you would like to ask that I may have missed, um, feel free to ask it now. Ask it again. Again, I hope you guys don't feel like I'm ignoring. It's just that we need to section off times to interact with chat as commercial sections here in the in the uh, stream. So let's spend 5, 10, 15 minutes interacting here. First, I'm going to check. It looks like Eddie Chow donated $10.73 to the channel uh, as a direct donation. Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you, man. Never, uh, never expected, but very appreciated. I really, uh, appreciate that again. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, it's a one, how do you call it? A one man show? One trick pony? One, one man show, I guess. Uh, what do you call those, uh, one man bands that like play the drums in a, in a harmonica? That's me with the channel. I'm doing everything. So goes directly to the channel, AKA this guy. So it's not going to get like, uh, you know, spent on any crap. It just helps me out directly. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think I can also check, why is it on a separate page? I gotta figure out if there's a easier way to pull these up, but, uh, let's see any super chats, see if it's updated. Yep. Okay. So those are the same. And then any new memberships as well, checking those. Okay. So I'm going to have to come up, uh, with, uh, maybe I'll have different tabs here. Actually, that's probably a good idea. I can probably do that now. Okay, I'm making mental notes for how YouTube live streaming works. Okay, good there. I think that was uh, the only donation during that break, it seems. So, uh, okay, pulling up the chat. How old is Eric, says Antoine. Chat, I'll let you answer that. How old am I? Sorry, this was a running meme on the Twitch channel. People say, how old is Eric? I'd be like, how old am I, chat? And, uh... <laughs> Loving the sound effects is brain. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Nick said mentally, probably 20 or probably 12. <laughs> exactly. That was the running joke on Twitch. People would say, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 13. Thanks for asking. I'm 13. Uh, so the running joke is that I just turned 14 this year. Uh, but if you double that, that's my actual age. I'm 28 years old. I know I don't look it. Believe me. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, Temis Texas, sup Eric, it's been a while to see, uh, nice to see you're doing well, thank you, good to see you too. Uh, uh, Bin Chenyara says, uh, yo Eric, I'm 23 years old and I live in Kyobashi, Osaka. Hey, Kyobashi boys! We, me, me, uh, we had a friend that lived in Kyobashi and we, whenever we'd go hang out, we're like, yo, we're the Kyobashi boys. So dumb. 
the Kyo fellow Kyobashi boys. Very nice. Lived here for one year now. Dude, very, uh, very nice. Very nice. Um, we, we gotta do some sort of like a meetup or something at like a, like a, a bar sometime when COVID lifts up a bit. I know some, like, the thing is, is like Japan's open right now. It might sound like everything's closed. It's not. Everything's open. I just personally am not going to bars. I don't have, the, I don't need to go. I want to go. Sounds like fun. I, you know, I, I miss socializing with people, but I'd be too nervous the whole time. Just like, hey, I don't know you. Go away. Like, I, I, Mentally, I'm just like, I just have my girlfriend come over and we just hang out in the apartment because it's just, yeah. Um, Kevin Mahonis says, uh, oh, he, he's on a different topic. I, I'll go ahead and leave that alone. Sorry. Um, okay. Adam Kawai Ariza says, uh, you gave us some good tips on finding housing in Japan. Uh, but do you have any tips on finding good jobs in Japan? That one, unfortunately, as much as I would like to say, like, go to this website, go to this meetup, go to this thing. Um, I got to be totally honest. My first job that I found, which, as you guys know, wasn't a dream job, but it was a, an entry into the country. A little sweaty in here. I got to turn on the AC. Um, I get hot talking so fast. Um, or I get sweaty talking so fast. Um, all of my jobs that I found so far, I just got to be honest, and this is unfortunate because I wish I had better advice. It was all through people I met, like word of mouth. The first job I got, I met through a fella at a bar. He was really kind, gay fella. He goes, hey, you need a job? I was like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, when you come back, yeah, you know, we stayed in contact and I got a job. Sweet. And then uh, uh, through a different means, I met someone who suggested my previous job. And then through someone in that job, they said, hey, you need a job? I know a guy who knows, knows a guy. All of my jobs I've gotten through someone who's just like, hey, like I met them. Um, so I guess I have to thank going out drinking because I met, I was able to socialize and meet people that way. So unfortunately, no, I'm sorry. I don't have like good advice on where to find it, but I would, I mean, my, here's my advice though. And I, if you didn't get this from me talking, I like, if it, if it wasn't clear, I'll just go ahead and say it now. If, if you find a job through like Gaijin pot is a pretty common source or Craigslist or, you know, just some online like japanjob.net or something like that. I, I almost guarantee, and I don't want to say it's the case always, but I almost guarantee it's pro it, very likely it's not going to be your dream job. And you probably know that already. But like, if you keep that in mind, thinking like, I'm going to go to Japan and my first year might kind of suck. Like it might be just a grind work-wise. But during that year, you're in Japan. So you already have a visa. Uh, once you're in Japan, it's much easier to find another job. Much easier. Just by meeting people. Hopefully you're a little bit social or have some friends. Um, and just over time, you're going to meet other foreigners that live here that are like, hey, I'm quitting. You should take my job. You will find opportunities for work. 100%, I think. As, unless you're a complete shut-in. Um, you, you have to be a little active. But I think naturally you're, you're going to meet people if you're asking the right questions. Um, uh, just know that your first year, spend it as like, all right, this is going to suck. But during this year, I'm going to find the next job and it's going to get better every year. And that's how it's been for me. Um, okay. Uh, JMG said, my only complaint about your live stream is that it's in the middle of the night here in California. Yeah. So that's, that's another thing. Even, um, I set it to 2 PM my time today because I didn't want to risk like accidentally sleeping in or not having enough time. I actually found myself this morning, um, waking up and being bored, waiting for it to start. It was like noon. I had my coffee and I was sitting here like, ready to go, but it was the first one. So I wanted to leave a few hours just in case like my whole computer broke and I needed to fix it or something. So I think moving forward, we'll probably have the stream start a bit sooner. I think it'll be better for everyone. Um, people, Japan time, it's noon. So it's definitely not like too early. Um, but it just, will bring it back a couple hours so people can, uh, so we'll, uh, in discord as well, or here on comments on this video, if you're like, Hey, you should do this time zone instead, but be, you know, <laughs> please be realistic as well. Like, don't just be like, do noon my time here in Turkey. Like, you know, and it doesn't help me at all or something. I don't know. Suggest what times you would like and we can uh, move forward and uh, figure that out. This is just the first one. Ace Jokes says, hey, Eric, long time no see. Welcome. Ellie said, I'm 35. <laughs> I wish. Uh, why would I want to be 35? Okay. Uh, Brandon Barton said, the live streams are great. It's the, uh, yeah, it's the only thing on in the middle of the night. Oh, so that's a, that's a, that's a bonus to doing it at night, I guess. Back when I was a kid, there was only infomercials, he says. Yeah, that's true. I Yeah. Yeah, it was infomercials and Girls Gone Wild, right? At like midnight, two in the morning. Shin Sakai Life. Yeah, yeah. The Kyobashi Boys, very nice. I, I love Shin Sakai. Uh, I, I love it. It's a great area to go do photos and stuff. Um, those The arcades down there, it's kind of a run, kind of a, it feels like a time capsule of the 80s down there. It's really cool. Nader said, 34 months on Twitch this month. Uh, GG. Now I need to start my streak on here. Hey, and again, and I, you know, 
I actually got some comments in the Discord where people were a little confused. They were like, hey, wait. So, and this is where we're going to talk after this commercial break about Twitch and YouTube moving forward. Because I have some ideas. I think once you hear me out, if you're like, why is he going on YouTube? I think if you hear my end, it'll make much more sense. If not, well, God bless you. But I, I, uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, now that I'm working part-time and it's actually possible, I think it's going to be very good. I haven't been able to stream on YouTube up until now because I was actually partnered with Twitch. Um, I had signed a contract with them and I was a Twitch partner, which is great. You stand out among the other streamers, but you're locked onto Twitch. You're literally not allowed to stream on any platform. Facebook, Instagram, maybe Instagram's fine, but I don't know. Uh, YouTube, you can't do it. So I didn't even have the option. So when things were kind of slowing down on Twitch, it was like, why do I need to be a partner still? Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, but people were asking like, so what? Do I need to cancel my Twitch subscription? I just want to say no. Uh, I, I'm hoping that I find a healthy balance streaming on both platforms. And in a perfect world, I would hope that fans, maybe they subscribe on Twitch. They don't have to subscribe on YouTube or, uh, you know, pay a membership. But I hope that they at least watch both because that way it'll still seem like full content. It's just that it's between two platforms. Naturally, some people won't watch the YouTube and some won't watch the Twitch. Um, so uh, I guess whichever one you want to support, that's totally up to you. But I don't think you have to cancel anything personally because we're going to be doing both. Um, okay. Brandon Barton says, can you find jobs on Craigslist or is it just good for housing? Uh, I didn't do any job hunting, but I think you can. I think you can. Very good for housing though, in my experience so far. Uh, Kevin Mahoney said, earlier I was talking about how expensive Colorado is. I'm glad you got a great living situation, bud. Thank you. And what's great is I love my apartment now and it's, it's affordable, but since I switched to part-time, my paycheck got cut in half. So although it's affordable... I have zero savings now. Uh, money's pretty tight, I gotta be honest. Like, the stimulus checks actually helped me out. But it's good. Like, I asked for this, and, you know, I wanted to uh, use that time for YouTube and stuff, which uh, the YouTube video ad revenue is, like, almost non-existent. So um, I think uh, doing live streams like this every once in a while, I've already made more than I made in the last three years on YouTube. So <laughs> in just today's stream. So just being frank, just being frank. It, it helps support um, just uh, the, the hours outside of work. Um, but again, Jenny and I are planning on moving into a place sometime next year, which is going to help that. Um, so I think just for the next, like maybe six months, money's just going to be tight and, um, it'll be a challenge for myself. I mean, you know, making the best of it. Um, okay. Ironhide 60 says, what jobs can be done in Japan besides teaching English? Cheers. Uh, welcome. Uh, English is definitely the most common. Um, other common ones are it and engineering. Uh, there's a lot of people I've met that uh, come and live in Japan for months or years at a time, uh, not speaking a word of English, but the company they have has a branch in Japan, and they'll come on an engineering, um, you know, they've got some thing they're rolling out or something, and uh, that's very common too, but the most common for sure is English teaching as far as like if you don't have that kind of a background, because I don't, um, English teaching is the way to go. Uh, so a lot of people who come here to teach English also get like part-time jobs at bars and stuff. Um, you don't get tips but, um, it can be a good, um, there, there's a lot of, a lot of bars that are willing to have a foreigner on their staff. Probably good to speak a little English, but there's a lot of like foreign friendly bars that don't require it. Okay. Uh, uh, Melly Kate 23 says, it seems like the easiest job to get in Japan is teaching English, uh, which hella sucks. Trying to get my Japanese to at least N3 level and pray to CM to get, us, <laughs> to get a CS job. CM is a big fan of the Twitch channel, and he kind of became a living uh, meme lord. Um, I can't give context here now, but a very, very funny individual, CM. He People literally started praying to him. Um, So he said, I'll pray to CM to get a, uh, a CS job. Yeah, I think you can do the CS thing. Again, I think I think if you like, like, I need a job in the next, like, four months, what do I do? English teaching is definitely the easiest one to find. But again, if you f get the job, get the, get the sponsored visa... You could, I'm not suggesting, but you could, I mean, even I quit my first job early. I didn't want, it wasn't like I intended, like, I'll get to my visa and then I'll leave them behind. It wasn't like that. It was just like, it kind of worked out that way. But I do know some people, I'll be frank, that joined my previous job. There was a girl that joined and she was awful. Like she was like, during the training, she was super nice. And then when work started, she was purposely terrible because she wanted to get either fired, laid off or quit herself. Um, like literally I found this out later she had joined and, uh, just to get the visa in the minute they got, they gave her her visa. She just totally shut off. Her lessons were terrible. The kids were crying. It was a mess. And then she quit, but she had a visa. Now, technically, if you quit your job and have a visa, you're supposed to report it. But let's be honest during COVID, I don't know if they're checking so much. I am not suggesting you do anything federally, um, gray here, but I'm just being frank. I think a lot of people, if they had a visa and quit their job and just didn't report it. 
I doubt anyone would notice. And I'm not saying you should do that. I would be too nervous too. I wouldn't know. I'd be super scared that the feds are coming after me. But uh, you probably you could get a first job and then look for a, find a better job within six months and then switch. You could. Might be scummy, but you could do it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ellie says, does your boss have a school in Fukuoka? Not yet. Sorry, Ellie. Um, okay. Uh, Bin Chanad says, uh, where is the English school located? I'm actually looking for an extra job as a teacher besides my school and uh, modeling gigs. The company I work for, first of all, as just a privacy to for my, my own social life. Uh, I'm not going to reveal where it's located. It's here in Osaka. Um, but they're not hiring. It's not like a big company. It's a small company, and I'm one of like two teachers. So, um, uh, Okay, Kim Mahona said, I found you on stream on Twitch because I was unemployed at the time. Uh, and so being up at 2 a.m. was okay. <laughs> Great. Yep, I definitely recognize my, his name is Mahoney, but I call him Mahonis. Mahonis. Um, Antoine says, I remember spamming Eric's YouTube live streams to start streaming on Twitch. Uh, and he actually started streaming on Twitch only and stopped making videos. And I felt bad because I love the vids. Yeah, it was all your fault, Antoine. It was all your fault. Shame on you. Aww. Just kidding. sound effects are so bad i love the sound effects i'm sorry um very nice says, hey hey eric it's mark from g shep mark harris which mark mark from g shep oh my gosh that's the church i grew up in shout outs to g shep the good shepherd <laughs> the good shepherd oh my gosh welcome thank you hey good to see you i got it Maybe you don't want to say your last name, but I'm trying to put, uh, Mark. Oh boy. It's been a long time. Uh, thank you for popping in. Good to see you. Uh, Millie Kate says, my best friend lives in Shinsekai. I go there like every week. It's definitely seedy, but it's Japan. Uh, rent is dirt cheap. Yeah. It's definitely like a little bit more run down. Uh, I think there's like some homeless, uh, situations down there as well. Um, I love that area. I think it's awesome. I wouldn't mind living there. <laughs> Uh, I kind of like the grungier areas too. Even where I'm, I'm living now, it's a little bit grungy. Like it's grungier by Japan standards. They're like, oh, that's a dangerous area. Yeah, there's no danger in Japan almost ever. <laughs> like, I don't think there's ever been. Uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, I I like the grunge because it's like by Japanese standards, it's considered like dirty or grungy. But by foreign standards, it's like, dude, this is way nicer than the U.S. Um, uh, RJ Respicio says, uh, Japan time is just an hour off of Guam time. So it's great for me. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Janessa says, ha ha. Eric is talking so fast. He accidentally said he wished he was 35. I know. Uh, Antoine says, make more videos, please. Your editing is awesome. Well, that's the plan. And that's what we're going to discuss, uh, after this, uh, little chat. Again, this is the commercial break because you guys are the sponsors of the channel. So this is the break. Um, let's see. Ace Joke says, I remember you play, you like Halo. Have you been playing MCC on PC? MCC? Wait. MCC? What's MCC? Yeah, I like Halo. I'm not sure what MCC is, though. So I've, I haven't been playing it recently, though. But I, someone did give me that game on Steam, though, actually. I don't think I like it as much on the PC. I know you can play with a controller. But I remember, like, playing some matches, and it didn't really feel quite the same. But maybe it's better now, with, now that Halo 3 is out. I don't know. Okay. Um, Jim G said, I signed up on Twitch, uh, and there's so much going on, and a lot to look at i gave up on it youtube is like an iphone apple it's dummy proof yeah yeah so again after this break i'm going to kind of discuss why i actually think there's very good things about youtube live streaming a lot of twitch people will like hiss at it like uh youtube it's it's too it's too like watered down there's some features that are on youtube though uh for example you can rewind dude that's huge on twitch if you load up a stream that's it you have to watch it and if you miss anything it's gone like i mean you can watch the vod after the stream ends but you can't like rewind like wait what did he say on youtube you can literally rewind like oh that's what he said and then fast forward back to like the live point it's fantastic that's an awesome feature okay why are you moved to japan uh i studied here for a year loved it and now i live here and uh have a girlfriend um doo -doo 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 -doo. Naders, how long would you, uh, how long, wait, how long would you stay in Japan if you were to marry Jenny? Okay, oh Jesus, the big questions. Uh, so I listen to a lot of Bill Burr's podcasts, so I, I'm kind of, those are, he's like, oh Jesus. Um, how long would I stay in Japan if I was to marry Jenny? Well, uh, we don't have a plan for sure, but I think, uh, realistically, probably from now, um, the next three to five years, um, and if we do decide to move to the U.S., um, 
I think that'll be for another podcast, but we have some plans and some ideas for that. Personally, the dream is to, uh, uh, in a perfect world, maybe get married, stay in Japan for a bit, and then go back to America and buy some land and do a little kind of a one foot half off grid, but not completely like off the grid kind of craziness, but something that's like affordable. It's kind of it, but we'll save that for another time. Um, do 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 do. Brandon, maybe besides teaching English, you can become a professional uh, foreigner on Japanese TV. Well, I've already gotten to do a little bit of YouTube work with a Japanese company, so it's um, one step in there, but that's definitely uh, an opportunity. One thing I really, really want to do, um, there some one of my favorite videos, and probably a lot of you guys have seen it too on my YouTube channel, is where I interviewed uh, uh, foreign students, or sorry, Japanese students at uh, the university I set it out here in Japan. Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you. The sound clip from that video. Um... I would love to do more content like that. So I think if my Japanese improves, I, I kind of wanted to wait because I want. I think it'd be really fun to go out into the streets, uh, especially in Osaka. There's so many interesting people here. The culture here is a little bit more like wacky, I guess is the best way to say it. A little bit more relaxed, funny, chilled out, way more matching my personality than like say Tokyo where everyone's just like, it's like New York. You know, everyone's in a rush. No one gives a shit about the person next to them. It's a little bit like, you know, just a little bit colder, right? Because it's a city, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hustle, you know. Um, Osaka is super, like, kind of wild, um, and I, and there's some crazy characters that I think it would be really fun if I, if my Japanese was a little bit more fluent to go out and try to interview people uh, in Japanese, or just do like we did in that video and say, "Hi, can I interview in English?" And um, they do their best to speak in English, and there's, you know, some humor there between miscommunications, and um, I want to do more content like that. Maybe not immediately, but I'm definitely thinking about doing more of those. I enjoyed doing it at least. Uh, Melly K said, I live in a dangerous quote unquote area in Kobe. Uh, it's just a lot of drunk old folks, literally a far car, literally a far cry from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so bad. Again, it's like, it might like maybe appearance wise, like a grungy area in Japan is like, there's graffiti. It's a little dirty. There's some garbage here. Um, you know, whatever, but like by like the rest of the world standards, it's not bad at all. <laughs> it's just that like compared to like the beautiful places of Japan, sure, it looks a little dirty, but it's not actually dangerous. Usually the worst you'll see is an old man peeing in public. That's very common here for some reason. Um, do, 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 do. I was actually with Jenny on a, a date. We went to, uh, the, the, if you guys haven't seen my newest video, by the way, go check it out right now. Well, after this stream, open a tab, like it before you even watch it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it's a video about uh, looking for retro video games in Japan and like where to go. Uh, if you're in Osaka, you can do a full day and get like a ton of games or just just to look at stuff. Um, uh, very fun series to edit and uh, and uh, upload. We just finished. It, it was a two part series and I just finished that. Um, I'm actually gonna make one more video related to that um, at that uh, space station bar. Um, but with COVID, we had to postpone it. But we're gonna do it again soon. Um, anyways, uh, sorry, kind of rambling there. Um, so Jenny and I went on like a date in that area looking for some games and hanging out and we were drinking in a, again, you can drink in public in Japan. It's not uh, considered rude. Well, especially if you're in like the touristy areas, like it's totally fine. You just find a spot in a corner and have a drink. It's not some people like a lot of people they'll watch. Uh, I say this all the time, but a lot of people who are like getting interested in Japan, they'll type in on YouTube, like what's rude in Japan. And someone is like, they make a video about like what can be considered rude in Japan. And they'll use that as like, that's like the standard everywhere. It's definitely not even true. Like if you come to Japan, you'll see immediately, like there's always people walking around having a drink, it, depending on the area. But if it's a very touristy area, like, trust me, you're fine. You're not going to bother. As long as you're not like verbally yelling at people or, you know, being obnoxious, you are not going to bother anyone. I promise you. So just, I wouldn't worry about it, but Jenny and I were having a beer, uh, next to this like parking lot and just right in the middle of a sentence, I just look over, I was like, Oh, that guy's taking a piss. There was an old man, like right in front of me and Jenny and you could hear the splashing. She's like, Oh, gross. She, I was dying laughing. This is so, yeah. So if that, if that shows that, uh, is drinking a beer outside root in Japan? Well, um, sure. But there's a guy peeing next to me. So I guess not. Um, let's see. All right, let's do the last few questions and then we'll go back into continuing the podcast discussion. Uh, oh, you're, oh it's mid What's up, man? Can you change YouTube names? I know Twitch lets you change uh, YouTube names. He said, I hate my YouTube name. It's, it's different on Twitch. I recognize you now. Sebastian said, so Sebastian is trolling. So he's like, so when's your next video? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, the Master Chief Collection. I think I have that. I mean, is that the one where it just like every game that comes out on uh, with Halo, 
uh, you get the new one. Like, Halo 3 just came out recently. I think that's what I have. Someone bought it for me. Okay. Uh, Tesseract. Oh, sorry, I got distracted there. Uh, YouTube keeps pinging me anytime someone posts a, a, a quote-unquote edgy comment, and I have to approve it or deny it. I don't know if mods can see that. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have a powwow with mods and see if... Uh, I was looking there. Um, all right, we're reaching almost tw uh, two hours. So I'm going to read these last few comments uh, and then we'll uh, go back into the podcast and then wrap it up. I'm trying to keep it under two hours today. This is so much fun though. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, uh, where was it? Um, okay, Tesseract said, uh, since we're facing uh, this freaking pandemic, how's the condition of Japan? Japan right now, fortunately, um, I don't know if it's a result of just everyone being a little bit more, um, you know, let's not get political here, but being a little bit more um, compliant with um, hand sanitizer and masks. And masks... Let's not even go down that because I know it's a big issue everywhere else right now. But masks, it. Fucking thank you. Fucking thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Kevin Mahonis just did a super chat for 20 bones. And he said, had to give something in honor of old times, bud. I'll clap to that. I need to get, especially during these chat moments, because I was thinking in my head during the podcast, we don't need like loud sound effects because we're muting them anyway. Like if someone donates, it's not going to pop in and interrupt this, the the podcast. But during these commercial breaks, I would love it to still make a sound or I should at least have the ability to, to activate it. So, cha ja Too hype! <laughs> Sorry that it's a little bit timid uh, today, but we'll, we'll improve it moving forward. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the support. I appreciate that. Um, very appreciated. Thank you so much. That's very generous of you, man. Thank you. Uh, to get back to Tesseract's question, though, how's the condition of Japan? So, Japan's... Uh, COVID numbers have been very low, or at least reported low. Um, and as a result, nothing is shut down anymore. There might be some stores that may have like kind of temporarily gone out of business. I know some restaurants that are like, they're just staying closed because they just couldn't afford it. And they're like, we'll just close for now. And then we'll come back when we're ready. Or maybe they won't open. I don't know. But the city is like, I will say 95% completely open. Um, I went out even last night. Uh, I had to print out a document. And if you don't have a printer, um, in Japan, fear not. You can go to the nearest convenience store down the street from your house and pay 10 cents per page and print out some paper. So I rarely have to, seldom have to print out anything physical paper. Um, I just go and pay 10 cents and you print it off. Don't need a printer, pretty nice. So I had to go off and print off some document last night before bed and it was like uh, probably 1230 at night. I was getting ready for the stream, got that already. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta go do that thing. Okay, I'll do it now so I don't have to do it today. And uh, I went and did it last night, I'm in my pajamas and I walked next to the Triangle Park, which is near where I live. Uh, it's uh, just a, uh, it's kind of an outdoor grungy place to drink and skateboard. And it's uh, very, very social when there's not COVID. Well, since COVID started, it started, it's been super dead last night. It was packed. And I mean, I like even more so I think than before COVID, because now that everything's open again, everyone wants to party, no masks, <laughs> everyone drinking, everyone smoking, crazy people shouting i'm just like oh crap like it still kind of scares me personally i'm like because i i'm not going out so much so i'm just like i don't need to be here i got my mask went in printed my thing went home but it was it was both cool and also kind of scary to see that it's open again because that's awesome that it, people that want to go out they can um and it's not of course like i think people that are like going to bars and stuff on your way in they check your temperature um all that but you don't need to have a mask so um yeah, so it was both kind of scary and sad to see so many people all like not social distancing, but at the same time it was like, well, the numbers are pretty low, so it's maybe it's a good thing, but you know, you're gonna have a million opinions on that. But it was it was kind of cool to see because the city's been dead for a while. Um, it was like a, you know, good and bad, I guess. I don't know. Okay, uh, last few comments here. Uh, Yosuke Izumi said, "Do you have a Patreon account? Very happy to see you again on YouTube and want to support you more constantly." Absolutely. Uh, I do have a Patreon account uh, below this video, uh, whether you're on a phone or a computer, if you go into the uh, description, uh, it's patreon.com forward slash Eric abroad, just Eric abroad, one word, but the link is below. Um, maybe I can post it here in the chat for you guys. Let's see. I guess I'm not ready for this. Uh, give me a moment. The first stream guys, the first stream. I need to have that like jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. Uh, there's the link there. If that works, if you can click on that, I think you should be able to. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that. If you do decide to support during the stream, it will also get acknowledged and uh, will pop up here on, uh, on the stream. So uh, thank you for considering. Have a look and let me know. We have different uh, tiers in there as well. Um, okay. 
Let's do uh, let's do another couple minutes and then we'll go back and I, I gotta wrap this up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have to, but we should. Uh, Cause we'll be doing more streams moving forward. I'm having a lot of fun though. Nitomea Nightmare says, I loved the uh, retro games uh, video. Thank you very much. Uh, LA Lakers, Miami Heat. I could give, uh, I could give, I could care less about basketball. I'm sorry. Uh, not to be like a jerk. I'm just moving forward here. <laughs> uh, fucking Ame Mura. People literally pee on the Koban in the park. Yeah, they do. They do. Gen 6 Gamer. Hey, what's up? He says, hey, what's up, Eric? Hot Slime 6 says, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, okay. RJ Respecio asks, are the trains still packed, especially in the mornings with all the social distancing, distancing stuff? Very packed. So that's a problem too. Cause like, it's funny because although everyone, like some people have a mask on, some people will wear it like under their nose. So that defeats the whole purpose. Cause you're still breathing on people and inhaling their, their fumes. Um, you can still catch it in your eyes probably. Right. So I, I'm still a little bit strict. When I get on the train, I put on sunglasses. I might look kind of weird by Japanese standards. Like, who's that fucking guy? Because sunglasses are considered kind of like edgy. They're kind of like you're kind of a thug. I literally, I'm in my, I'm in my work, my work uniform. You know, button down shirt. I put on a mask, baseball cap, sunglasses, and then I spray myself with like, like a, it's kind of like virus resistant barrier spray. Um, and then I don't sit down. I don't touch anything. I just stand there and just headphones and just kind of. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I get a lot of funny stares, like, who's that guy? But everyone else, they're just sitting, it's like, you might as well not be wearing the mask at all if you're, like, having it half your nose, you're touching the, they, like, they touch, they touch the railing, and then they, like, they, like, pull down their mask and wipe their face and put the railing back on. It's like, what's the point? So, I'm very, like, hands in pocket, sunglasses, just kind of, like, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Kevin liked that shoe hype better. Uh, great. Yeah, by the way, guys, if you become a member on the stream, it has custom emojis similar to Twitch, so consider doing that. If you hit join below the uh, the video here, you can do that. It gets you some emojis and some badges that pop up in the comments when you comment on the videos and also here in the live chat. Um, okay. Uh, Gene White said, do you have any advice for looking for apartments in Japan as a foreigner? I, I hate to do this, but we actually, this podcast, it's been live for about an hour and a half. We just spent the last about hour discussing apartments. Um, long story short, Craigslist in Japan. I promise it's very foreign. It's like foreign friendly apartments. But if you have the time, re-listen to what I just said in this podcast, rewind it, and it'll help you out. I think like we, we just got finished talking about that. So I'm just going to move forward here. Uh, Japan says, yeah, we're back to normal. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. That's good that you're being safe. Thank you. I'm not here to preach what you should do. That's just what I'm doing. Um, okay, last one, and I got we got to move forward. It's kind of hard to pick a point to, like, stop, and I, I I would hate to, like, cut anyone off, but Sebastian asks, sunglasses are considered rude when speaking to people because they hide expressions, which by Japanese society standards is encrusted through their eyes. Yeah, but I'm on the train not talking to anyone, so fuck them. Okay, that sounded mean, but you know what I'm saying. All right, going back into the podcast now. All right, so the next topic I wanted to go through before we wrap up today's stream was basically, um, well, I guess I wanted to go longer than I think uh, I'm going to allow today just to keep this first one concise for those who want to watch the VOD. I don't want it to be too long. My previous podcasts were always about an hour because I didn't want them to be too ranty. And compared to Twitch, YouTube streams, I think, in general, should be shorter and more concise anyways. Um, so here's basically um, what's going on. So basically, uh, if you have or haven't, Let's just assume you haven't been watching me on Twitch the last couple of years. So basically, um, like I said earlier in this podcast, we were doing uh, um, a lot of outdoor. It was most 95% like, let's go outside and explore Japan and live stream it. So we'd go find an area that had decent internet and get on the train and just kind of go have an adventure. Now, that was a lot of fun and people were able to support through donations and stuff. Um, you know, it, it varied from day to day, but it would uh, help support any trip I wanted to do. Now, the thing with Twitch... And let's, let's just like, let's just like put it on the table. Like what's good and bad about Twitch and good and bad about YouTube that I've noticed over the last few years and why I want to proceed trying to do both. And I think it's going to be a good thing. And we'll, we, we will make adjustments as we go here, but Twitch, the focus. And I think as a streamer, if you want to be successful on Twitch is longer hours are better than like shorter, more like content driven streams. And the reason I say that is is on Twitch, it's a lot easier on Twitch than on YouTube to, like, it's a lot more common to go on Twitch and just browse channels. Like, if you if you enjoy that type of content, it's not for everyone, but if you enjoy, 
live streamers. It can be fun to go into like kind of the more obscure categories and find a streamer that maybe has like less than 10 viewers, less than 50 viewers, less than 100 viewers and interact with someone like that because you will get an interaction with them as opposed to a streamer who has like 10,000 viewers. They're not going to see your comment. So on Twitch, the game is um, just as the streamer, it's always better to stream longer because if I stream for eight hours, that's eight hours of a chance that random people are going to stumble upon my stream, maybe enjoy it, and maybe start supporting and following the stream. So it's like a numbers game. It's go as long as possible, not necessarily be entertaining the whole time, which coming from YouTube was really hard to adjust to because when, I, when you're doing video editing and posting things and doing social media and stuff, you're obviously a little picky and a little bit choosy on what you're sharing because you have the ability to edit it. You have the ability to like, oh, I think I can make that better. Like, let's fix that. And before I post it, because I want it to be as good as it can be. And then on Twitch, like I, when I, I remember actually we would do a stream and I'd have an idea like, okay, today we're going to go to this area and we're going to go to the arcade and then we're going to do this and do this. And I ended up finishing my goals for the day in less than like two hours. And I was like, oh shit, well, we have another three hours. Like, and I started kind of panicking. And everyone in the chat, they're like, dude, just being live is the content. And I was just like, really? Like that? I mean, of course, it's probably better if you're doing something engaging, but it's not realistic if you stream for eight hours that it's all going to be like high action, high content stuff. There's a lot of low moments. There's part where the internet cuts out. There's parts you got to literally go to the bathroom. You got to eat, like you got to take a break. Like it, there, there's just a lot of like downtime and stuff. So obviously this type of content, if you were to like stumble upon a channel and like all your videos that you can watch that, you know, like previous streams, they're like eight, 10, 12 hours. Who's going to sit and watch that? Some people do, but most, no, I would never do it. I wouldn't like, oh, it's an eight hour stream. I'm not going to sit and like watch a stream that's no longer live for eight hours. So the game with Twitch is not only do you have to stream long hours is the minute that the stream ends, you basically just pretend like that stream is like gone. Like there's clips. People can save little moments of that stream and share them and have like funny moments and share the VOD itself. Um, but you base as the streamer, you just, you just move on. That, that stream is now done. YouTube, if you make a video and you post it, even like this podcast, it lives on the channel. Like sure, it goes unlisted, but you can make it public and you can monetize it and run ads on it. Like that video, when it's done, will in essence become its own video that over time will still kind of like support you. So that's a big difference is that on YouTube, when you post something, it's like, okay, now that's there and it's kind of the wheels are turning on that video. Let's start the next project. But that, those previous videos are still supporting me so that I can keep growing and moving forward. Twitch, it's like, well, I made a hundred bucks from this time to this time, but the second you end it, you're not, the, the, the money stops. So you, not only do you have to stream long hours, you have to do it daily, like every single day. So you can imagine how that burns you out where like, um, I would stream for five days in a row, 10 hours a day, feel like I put in so much work, like guys, like, okay, I put in my time this week. Now this next week, I'm gonna take a break. The minute I ended my last stream, after like five days of grinding immediately like so when's the next stream and which is natural i'm not i'm not blaming chat i'm just saying that that's the nature of twitch is it's like all right well that was good but when's the next one so me trying to balance like my my real life my social life wanting to hang out with friends outside of streaming it was it became to be completely honest the last like two years is i could not go hang out with friends unless i was allowed to bring the camera because there was I had to literally wait in my head like, okay, I could go hang out with this friend and grab a beer, but I could also bring the stream and that counts as the stream for the day. Maybe, maybe even earn a little cash, you know? So I'd have to ask the friend, like, can I bring the stream? And he's like, initially they're usually like, yeah, sure. But then it's kind of weird because you're like sitting there and they're like, wait, so that thing's on the whole time. Like, yeah. And they're like, oh, cause I wanted to like have like a personal story, but I don't really want to share it with like the world. And then that affects my interaction with that friend. We're no longer like genuine. We have to, we have, we're in front of a camera. So for two years, I kind of let it, I kind of let that be how I live my social life. Like even like going on dates and stuff like, Hey, can I bring the camera? You can imagine how that's like not really ideal. If you're really trying to have like an actual, it kind of felt like disingenuine to the person I'm with. You know what I mean? It's kind of selfish almost. And, um, so that's Twitch. And it's not to say that it was all bad. I'm just saying that like, that's kind of the, how the Twitch streams uh, are, are the most beneficial is long hours every day. And no matter what you're doing, who you're hanging out with, all your social life has to be on stream. So you have to like watch what you say, of course, not that you're going to in real life say anything probably terrible, but you still, you have to be careful if you accidentally say something that's a little not, you know, 
you just have to filter yourself and it, and and you're always worried about what you're saying and it's just it can um it you know i had no social life outside of that uh, needless to say so um so that's twitch the the goal is to stream long hours every day and to keep the chat as happy as possible the chat is the stream like if the chat gets mad and they hate you your your career is done so you got to keep them happy not to say that like you're like you know being fake with them to keep them happy but you keep that in mind that like okay i bet if i did this they would enjoy that so you do a little goof or something like that you know what i mean it's all it's all in the back of your head now with youtube like i was saying what one really cool feature that never existed on Twitch, um, and you guys may have saw it with this stream in particular. Um, I was able to make the, the 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 thumbnail, the title, the information, and the link shareable for this stream three days in advance. You can make it a month in advance if you wanted. But I was able to post the, the link over the like three days. Like, hey, by the way, we're doing this in three days at this time. Check it out. And people who click on it, it shows them what time it starts in their time zone. So on Twitch, you couldn't do that. They're like, what time are you starting? I'm like, five o'clock. Like, well, what's that? What's five o'clock in California? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Calculate it. Like, you know, but on YouTube, you can literally see the time it starts. You can set a reminder for it. And over like three or four days, rather than just streaming every day and praying that people kind of like zombily watch it every day, you can kind of build hype toward a stream. Like, oh, in three days, we're doing a video game related stream. So people who might enjoy that might set a reminder. Maybe those that don't, they might pass on that stream for that day but i think that's really cool that you can kind of share and promote the stream days in advance and build a little bit of hype for it you know um i think that's a very neat feature another one that i mentioned earlier on twitch or on youtube that you can't do on twitch is during a live stream you can rewind so if you show up to a stream like maybe 20 minutes late and you don't really mind like you can still talk to the chat while it's going but you don't really mind watching the stream 20 minutes to find everyone else because you want to watch it from the very beginning you can scrub back and watch it from the beginning but still like interact with the chat i think that's awesome um again if you like if i say something that you like wait what was that you can go back and watch it again and like i said those that show up late they can scrub back and uh, uh go do that so those are some really unique features that are on twitch or on youtube only um of course there's some drawbacks that uh there's some good things on twitch uh that aren't on youtube uh, one good thing on Twitch is that you can make clips. I think that's a cool one. Um, moments of the stream. So like, say we're streaming and all of a sudden in the background, like a light falls down and shatters like, Oh shit. That's like a moment on the stream that was funny or, you know, surprising. You can make a clip of that moment and share like a 30 second clip with people of that stream. Uh, YouTube doesn't have that feature. So I think with YouTube, the only alternative is that you can, um, you can share videos from the current time. So I, I don't know if, if we did, if we did a future stream here on YouTube and some guy in the background, like waves and people find it funny, um, you can, you, while watching the VOD, you could probably copy, like copy the, uh, the time current time and then share that video and it'll start playing from that time. I guess that's the compromise. So just, just listing some examples of like kind of some of the subtle differences between the two, but long story short of what I'm trying to say, and I'll, I'll get into some more specific ideas here on which, uh, what kind of content we'll be doing, but Twitch is a little bit better for content that I think like, so say, say I'm, uh, you know, I'm uploading YouTube videos. We do uh, a, a podcast live stream like this, but tomorrow I wake up a little tired. Um, I'm not really in the mood to do like a, like a, a YouTube kind of planned out podcast with like a theme or with like a, you know, a set like goal in mind. I just want to, I just want to play Grand Theft Auto for eight hours today. Not nothing related to Japan. I just want to sit have people in the chat to interact with, have a beer, and play some games today. Now, that content doesn't need to be on YouTube. It, no, why would you watch that content after it's not live? It's not related to Japan. It doesn't help my, quote unquote, my brand. It's not related to Japan. It doesn't belong on YouTube. It doesn't need to be there. So that's where I think Twitch can be great. It's more of a variety-friendly uh, platform. And since I already have followers on YouTube, Twitch and of course previously on YouTube as well. Um, those who want to watch that content are already following the channel. Um, of course, you can follow it now if you if you haven't and you would like to. But I think Twitch moving forward is going to be those kind of more like, hey, I have six hours free today. Um, I'm gonna get a haircut and then get some lunch and then grab a beer with a friend. Let's take the camera and stream all of that. It's not necessarily exciting content. We're just kind of hanging out and you guys are just watching a day in my life. It's a little bit more variety, a little bit more random, not very, uh, I'm kind of just have the camera rolling and I'm not like trying too hard. That will remain on Twitch. And that's what we've always been doing. So that content isn't very different than what I've been doing on Twitch. But now on YouTube, um, we now have the opportunity to do content that we couldn't do on Twitch. So for example, 
if uh, if I want a video that I want to make a live stream of that's like, First of all, I can say, hey, we're doing this in a week. So I have a week to build up hype to this stream. And it's like a big, I don't know, say we're going to like the, the most expensive sushi restaurant in the world. This is, you know, it's not a real story, but let's, I'm going to the most expensive sushi restaurant possible in Osaka and we have the full rights to film there. Um, that, that kind of a stream, right? I like you build hype to it. We're going to the most expensive place. Join us. We're going to be there for an hour and a half. Hour and a half is pretty, you know, pretty concise. It's long for a YouTube video, but for a live stream, it's pretty concise. The, the, we have an idea in our head of what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll even kind of pre-think, you know, do a little research on sushi so I know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, basically, I can kind of make a plan, maybe even a little bit of a, not a script. Per, people on Twitch like to laugh, like, you script your content because it's supposed to be live and, like, real. But on YouTube, you're, you're, it. I think it'll be like more like you're, it's almost like a hybrid between a YouTube video, but it's also live. You know what I mean? Like you're seeing, you're watching it like live in the moment. Um, but when the stream is done, someone who stumbles upon the video a year later could still watch it and find it enjoyable. So I think any content that could be related to Japanese language learning, I'll be honest, I need to study more Japanese anyway. I speak the language, but I haven't been like actively studying. Let's do a stream where maybe I uh, I have some ideas where I, I, I collect a lot of Japanese video games. I usually play my games in English, but like if I own a Japanese game, um, I have the means on my consoles to play the English version of that game because it's my native language and it's more fun for me and more enjoyable. But if we like say we get like a simpler game that's like a kid's game, I think I – what game did I have in mind? Um, oh, boy. Say like for example, shitty game. You guys might know it. Hey, you Pikachu for the N64. It's an awful game. It was this game that came out for the Nintendo 64 back in the day. It had a it had a microphone and you could command Pikachu. Well, in theory, it doesn't really work. Uh, where you want him to walk around. So if you play the Japanese version of that, because in English you'd be like, "Hey, Pikachu, come here," and he runs here. Here, uh, 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 roll over, and he rolls over, or something like that. Well, if we played the Japanese version of that, that could be a fun little like Japanese challenge. Like, wait, how would I say this in Japanese? Okay, and then I like make a note. So, any con what I'm trying to say is any content that is maybe like Japanese language learning uh, opportunity, um, Japanese cuisine. Um, my girlfriend is Japanese, so maybe her and I do like a podcast together speaking only in Japanese and she can correct my Japanese as we do it and I'll make notes. I can translate for you guys. So more more content that's very strictly focused to Japan, that's a little bit more concise, a little bit more planned and thought out and hopefully higher quality content. Um, and again, I can, because I have like a week to plan for it, I can really think, okay, this, this hour and a half is going to go like this, this, and this, and this. And then you guys hopefully find that enjoyable because your hour and a half is well spent. Maybe rather than watching a Netflix film, you watch the, the, the stream live with some popcorn and it's pretty entertaining, hopefully. Um, so that's my thinking moving forward because a lot of people are asking like, wait, so are you switching to YouTube now and you're quitting Twitch? Um, Oh yeah, I said this earlier. So the, the reason I haven't streamed on YouTube at all, like I probably would have from time to time streamed on YouTube just to mix it up and just to update and say hi. But because I was I was actually partnered on Twitch, I was a Twitch partner like by contract, I wasn't legally allowed to stream on YouTube. Uh, I couldn't do it. I was by contract signed with Twitch. Um, which being a partner with Twitch has its benefits. You gain access to some features. Your channel stands out a bit. It's a little easier to get recognized. Um, and, and when you go to the Twitch events, you get access to VIP and things like that. Um, but by this time, I wasn't really doing Twitch full time anymore. I wasn't really going outside. COVID's happening. I'm just kind of playing games. I kind of felt creatively stuck. I was like, man, I need to do some, I need to do something creative, something that I'm, and, uh, I'll even say, I think, you know, I think really, uh, because with my background studying film and working and doing video work and editing and stuff and it's stuff that I really enjoy, my strength is definitely not in live streaming. It's more in video editing. So um, I think I've been kind of thirsty for that. And now that I've switched to part-time, I thought, oh my God, this is the perfect opportunity to get back into YouTube stuff because I have the time now to edit videos. But also, let's do some streams. So I contacted Twitch and said, hey, when does my contract with you guys end? Like, I don't want to terminate it, but when does it end? And they said it ends October 1st. So the day that we're uploading this podcast is what? October 11th? So... Um, this was like a month ago. They told me that and I said, Oh shit. So that's in a month from now. Okay. So I spent that month kind of getting ready with ideas and ultimately working on that. Uh, my most recent video I've uploaded the, uh, video game hunting part two and, uh, worked really hard on that one. And, um, I'm just very excited cause I thought, okay, this is the perfect opportunity. My work schedule is now in place. Um, 
we can start, come back with a video podcast like we're doing now to explain and kind of catch up and kind of say everything we want to say. And then moving forward, we can have some really focused content like, oh, today we're doing, we're cooking takoyaki for you guys over the next uh, 90 minutes and having a beer, you know, but that's cool. You guys can watch us cook. We can show you the ingredients. We can have my girlfriend um, get her mic'd up. Um, and I, I have this new camera set up, which is nice. I didn't have that before. Um, and I have additional webcams and stuff that we could get creative and like put cameras in the kitchen and, um, you know, just kind of, uh, get, there's just so many cool things we can do, but on top of doing stuff in the house, like podcasts and cooking and Japanese language learning, I can take you guys outside. Like I, like I said, I did a lot of outdoor stuff with Twitch. Um, the more random stuff, like the longer streams are probably better for Twitch, but for YouTube, we can do like, Hey, we're going to this restaurant. It's the most expensive restaurant in Japan. And we have full permission to film there. Let's go. That would be perfect on YouTube. Wouldn't it? I think it'd be so fun. And, uh, Oh, I see in the corner of my eye. I know I promised that I wouldn't, uh, interrupt the podcast conversation for those audio listeners. Um, when someone donates, but I gotta be honest, it just popped up in the corner of my eye. This is something I got it used to, but I'll just go ahead and read it right now. Uh, JMG 544 donated $11.03. I'm not sure why that number is that number. Maybe it was converted from something. I'm not sure. Um, but he said, nice to have you back on YouTube. And then 11.03. Why? Oh, so you did, was 11.03, is that a month? I, I know I promised I wasn't going to read chat during the podcast, but I was actually kind of reaching the end of my, uh, my um, I think my, well, maybe we can just go back to the, <laughs> go back to the chat uh, commercial break here. Guys, we have reached um, over two hours here. It's a little longer than I wanted to go today. Um, again, the, my goal with YouTube moving forward is I want to keep the streams on YouTube concise. And it's not because I don't want to stream. It's because I want to keep it like, you know, keep it juicy, trim the fat, keep it nice, tight. And when it, you know, uh, end on a high note. Uh, so to speak. So I hope that helped explain um, the first part of this podcast. We talked about uh, just my life leading up to like uh, to this point, finding work and my apartments and why I wasn't really having the time to do YouTube stuff, why I started doing Twitch instead. And then now that uh, Twitch is slowing down, why I think what I, I can take what I've learned from Twitch, what I've learned from doing YouTube and doing both. Um, and I think the focus realistically will be ultimately I, uh, you know, originally I am a YouTuber. Um, over a Twitch streamer. I think I'm, I'm stronger suited for it as well, but there, that doesn't mean that we can't stream on Twitch and that there's not content for it. Twitch will kind of just be like, Hey, you don't have to tune in at all, but this is my off day and I'm just hanging out, playing some games, not related to Japan at all, just to like relax and have fun. That, that belongs on there. And I think that's still, that's always what it has been. And I think it's going to just, uh, I think it's going to be good for those who maybe are, who want it, but for those who don't, the YouTube content will stay concise, stay a little bit juicier, stay a little bit more, you know, thought out and hopefully higher content. So that's my thinking moving forward. I hope this makes sense. Um, and I hope you guys agree. Um, I would love to hear comments. Of course, I know everyone in every video, like voice your opinion in the comments, but, but really this is kind of a first test stream with this. I'm getting used to this. And I, I think today went really well, um, you know, as a foundation, but I would like to improve, uh, moving forward. And, uh, mo at the beginning, I spent like 10 minutes explaining how YouTube live works as far as like how you can donate and support. I'm actually going to be working on a video, um, that explains all of that in like less than 30 seconds that plays automatically at the beginning of every podcast. So I don't have to repeat it every time. It'll just be like, by the way, you can support by a, B or C. Thank you for watching. Let's start the podcast. And that's all. That's one improvement just as an example we're working on. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, this is the, uh, we're reaching like the end of the podcast. So we're going to do our sign off. I guess I call it a commercial break, pulling the chat up, thanking anyone who donated and supported and, uh, answering some final questions before we end it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's pull the chat back up. Oh, I missed the button. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm going to scroll up a bit. Uh, see if I miss anything. Do to do. Okay. He said, yeah, I remember someone in chat said, I remember you specifically bringing a camera on a date once. Yeah. And it, if they were cool with it, sometimes it was really fun, but there were some opportunities where I'd be hanging out with a friend and they're like, dude, I don't really want that camera on. And I had to decide, am I going to not hang out with this guy right now? Or am I going to turn off the stream? And there was a lot of times where I was just like, all right, I'm going to go then. And I kept the stream going and it, it felt bad. But then there was times where I turned off the stream and I equally felt bad because I like, I felt like I owed my viewers something, which I probably didn't, but you felt that way, right? Okay. Uh, Janessa said, it seems, it seems Twitch would be hard to keep up with since you have to be streaming all the time. I, I would argue also for the viewer, it's hard because once the stream is done, it's very unlikely you're going to watch it when it's not live. The excitement of Twitch is that you're watching it live in the moment. 
And unfortunately, if you don't have the time or the patience for that, then you'll never watch it. And then same as the streamer, like you have to be doing it all day. So the streamer's tired. Some viewers like that long content and it works for them. Like they work from home or they work in the office and they have a second monitor and they just like to have some background audio or something. That's great. But, um, YouTube being a little bit more like, even though we're doing a live stream, it's exciting if you can catch it live, but even when it's not live, I want it to still be interesting enough that you could still enjoy it and skim through it and still like find it, um, um, informational and like educational and entertaining. Uh, Amena, a Yob says, so is he starting YouTube again? I miss his videos. Never watched Twitch. Yes. And there, there's a lot, there's a lot of people like that. And I don't blame any side or anything. There was definitely now that I totally understand. And it's like, even me, I'll say I enjoyed streaming. I don't watch a lot of Twitch. I'll pull up a stream maybe before bed. If I have like an out, like of a game that I like, I like to play a lot of Starcraft. I'll pull up a Starcraft stream and watch it. But I'm not really a guy who likes to do the eight hour watching either. It's too long. It's just, um, some days maybe if I'm like, tired or sick and I'm just kind of hanging out. But for me personally, yeah, I enjoy YouTube better as well. So I, I think, I think having both is going to be great where YouTube is kind of the main focus of like, you know, more thought out, planned out, hopefully better content. And then Twitch is like, Hey, we also do cool hangouts and, and from time to time we'll do IRL on there as well. But when it's more like just kind of bullshitting, like, Oh, we're just going to stream for eight hours and go on a random adventure. I don't want to do that on YouTube. I don't think I'd be proud putting it on YouTube because it's just not very, concise so let's do it on twitch you know and that's how that content works on there anyway i think so i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna work out we'll see you know this is all a work in progress but i think we're we're on the right track uh ma aya says hey dude at the end of the stream do you mind just having a wrap up and summarize summarizing any important things oh that's not a bad idea yeah that's a good uh here i'll even write that down like uh for those that maybe are showing up late and don't want to like uh go back through well i guess it, it would require me to have to recap so i'll think about that but for today let me try uh today we discussed um my my we had two portions of today's podcast uh or at least the larger chunks of uh where i wasn't doing the hanging out with chat uh, or reading chat in that moment um where i discussed um advice on finding apartments in japan how you can use craigslist and things like that um where and how i found my jobs um through word of mouth and then the second part was basically just recapping my reasons of uh being more on Twitch than YouTube the last few years and why I want to come back to YouTube now. And it's all related to, it was because of work constraints and things like that. Um, I know that maybe not, that didn't really <laughs> summarize all of it, but those are the topics we covered. Um, but yeah, that's actually not a bad idea though. Maybe um, at the end of a stream, I can say like, we talked about this, 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 and this. I hope that helped. Something like that. It's, good, it's a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, Binch ya, Binchan Yare said, uh, you should do a takoyaki party with the viewers. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that'd be fun. We do a, a takoyaki party. We're cooking the food. If you guys don't know what that is, uh, it's a dish that you get a little grill in front of you and you make these little dough uh, octopus kind of uh, barbecue little balls that you uh, flip over, kind of like little donuts. And um, that could be really yeah. Do that for an hour and a half. Have a beer with the chat, and it's a good way to interact, but also show some food and maybe have Jenny, my girlfriend, uh, there with that. That could be fun. Uh, so Raf said uh, everything you said makes sense for sure. Awesome, cool. Okay. Uh, Maaya says, recommendation, do a crossover video with Paolo from Tokyo. I have actually heard of Paolo. I don't know if we've ever, uh, if we've ever chatted. I'll, I'll write his name down though and uh, give him another look. I've definitely seen his content. Um, maybe like in my head, uh, I, I need a refresher on like which, uh, which YouTuber that is exactly, but uh, not a bad idea. Okay. Uh, Final few comments, and then we'll be signing off for today. I, this went, again, a little longer than I was hoping, but this is so much fun. I'm not uh, wanting to end it sooner, but I'm just simply trying to keep it concise for uh, audio listeners. But I suppose at the end, this being more of, um, again, like uh, uh, at the end, I'm pulling the chat back up and doing like uh, what I consider like a commercial break. Maybe it's a good point for the audio listeners to say, okay, I don't want to listen to that, and they can just turn it off. We'll see. We'll see what works. Uh, by the way, I used to upload my uh, podcast stuff on uh, SoundCloud. Um, in order to do that, I had to pay a monthly fee. It was like $15 a month to keep that going. Um, so when I stopped doing the podcast, I obviously canceled that subscription. So at the moment, I don't have SoundCloud. But if enough people ask, they're like, hey, I, I like if enough people raise their hand saying that they uh, prefer to listen to it on SoundCloud and they don't want to watch it on YouTube very much, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and read. I'll, I'll redo it. I think it'll be worth it. And um, well, let's be honest. It's already paid for. Hey! 
<laughs> Thanks to you guys. You guys are the sponsors of this uh, this channel here, and I really appreciate that. Um, okay. Uh, Janessa says, hey, Eric, my boyfriend was really excited for the live uh, stream tonight, but was unable to make it. He said that he got into podcasts because of you. <laughs> really? Um, if it's not too much to ask, can you say hi to Vincent? Hey, Vincent, why aren't you watching the stream, huh? Why don't you show up on time next time, huh? huh? How's that? <laughs> yeah, we'll see him in the next one. Uh, JMG said, are videos saved and can be rewatched on Twitch when you go live? They can be rewatched, yeah. The problem, again, is if you stream for eight hours, are you really going to rewatch eight hours of content? Some people do, but I personally wouldn't. Um, Maaya said, uh, your crossover video with Paolo from Tokyo could be a day in the life of a foreigner working in Japan. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you for the suggestions. Uh, Jai Ninder said, hey, Eric, glad to hear you were doing uh, w well. Uh, I miss your bus content, a.k.a. story time with Eric. Bus content? Bus content? Bus content? Why do you call it bus content? I forget. Remind me. Maybe it's been that long. Uh, maybe I used to do a bus segment and I don't even remember. <laughs> but yeah, story time with Eric. I'm definitely going to be doing some story time. Oh my God. I'll, I'll even like just for a uh, little sneak preview. I have three like simple. It would take so I could probably finish them in less than a day or two of uh, editing, which is why I think they'll be cool. It's going to be a video called story time. It's just going to start to say story time. No intro, nothing. Just story time. So here in Japan, and I'll just tell a story. Maybe I'll animate it a little bit with like some figures. I have three stories of my life since I've been here in Japan where things went awry. Some some weird nights, some very interesting adventures. Um, I won't spoil them right now, though. Um, I think they're going to make uh, interesting little videos, but uh, that'll be coming up in the next couple months. I can't wait for that. Um, do, 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 do. And he said, uh, I miss your bus content, a.k.a. story time with Eric. I love the idea of doing both YouTube and Twitch. Great. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that because I'm really excited about it personally. I just... Uh, you know, some people were confused, like, so wait, are you do, are you quitting Twitch? Should I not subscribe to Twitch anymore? Should I follow you on YouTube? And I was like, well, ideally, you should just watch both. And then if you do want to support just whichever one you like best, please support that. Some people do both, but you don't have to do anything. Um, but if you can watch one or the other, watch which one you enjoy, right? I think YouTube is just so different that... Um, plus, uh, it's so cool because I already have so many, uh, you know, uh, great subscribers on the YouTube channel already that me just going live now, people automatically just kind of flooded in. This was so great. We got to wrap this up, guys. This is going longer than I thought. I'm having way too much fun here. Um, but we will be doing more streams this, uh, I think, um, I haven't planned out the details, but any details on upcoming streams will get posted on the Discord, uh, on the YouTube community, little, little slide there. It pops up on your phone or on computer. You can go to the channel and then click community. It's a little annoying, but easier to see on your phone. Um, I'll post it on Discord, the community thing. I'll post it uh, publicly on the Patreon page. So even if you're not a patron, you can load it there if you wanted. Um, and also, um, I thought there was one more. Instagram. I guess that's it, right? Am I missing something? <laughs> I don't know. You'll, you'll, I'll, I'll post all the information so, and it'll be up like a few days in advance. But I think I have an idea for uh, a video game uh, stream that I would like to do uh, this week. I actually wanted, to be honest... Um, the last video I uploaded, it got delayed by about three days because of an exporting error. I had to keep going in and like troubleshooting it and changing the graphics to make it so that my computer wouldn't crash when I was exporting it. It really sucked. Uh, I was hoping to have done this podcast like four days ago and then spend tonight because my girlfriend's coming over later, Jenny. We were going to play uh, a Super Nintendo game in Japanese together for like two hours. I thought that would have been really cool to debut tonight. Um, because that previous video got delayed, this podcast got pushed to today, and she is still coming over tonight, and we could do it, but I didn't want to have two live stream podcasts back to back. Also, the time zone might not be good for a lot of people right now, so I am postponing that, um, and we're going to do that sometime next month. She, I was like, oh, let's just do it next week. She's busy next week. Fuck. What about the next week? Well, that's the night we're going to dinner with her parents. Fuck. Okay, let's do it in November. So, stream with her will be in November, but you will see me doing a video game related stream, uh, Japanese related video game stream, live stream here on YouTube at some point, I think this week. So, I'll post all the information um, everywhere. Um, so, we'll, we'll, we'll work out the bugs doing it myself, and then when we stream with Jenny, hopefully it's all good to go from there. Um, okay. Uh, 
one thing about doing these podcasts is I feel like it never ends because <laughs> I can keep reading these comments all day. I don't mind doing this though. This is fun. I just worry for audio listeners if it's uh, too long. Um, but again, first one, we'll I'll kind of uh, we'll we'll see what works and what doesn't, and kind of uh, go from there. Okay. Um, Brandon Barton said, "Biggest takeaway from the live stream: Craigslist, Craigslist, Craigslist. Get your Japanese apartment from Craigslist. I should get a Craigslist like T-shirt and uh, get sponsored from them, even though it's a free website." Okay. IHK said, uh, 英語知らんけど uh, なぜ、なぜ顔を動、動け目に出てきた Wait, is that like a pimple? Is he saying I have a pimple? えちょっと待ってな。翻訳、翻訳。Oh, recommended? <laughs> え So he said, uh, 英語知らんけどなぜ、顔を、えちょっと待って。Recommended. Susume. Ah, I'm going to. I know. Kanji wa mada mada de. Susume. Susume. Naze ka o susume. Dete kita. Naze ka. Wakari masen ne. Kuma sai. I know. Gai koku jin de. Osaka ni sun de ru. I know. Yats de. Hajime mashte. Yoko so. Dai tai. Ma ego de shabete ru kedo. I know. Nihongo demo. Shabete ru. Yote. Nanti u. Plan. Doga toka aputsu ru tsumori de. まあ、ぜひ、興味あれば、見てください。ご覧ください。敬語。スイッチと a little、uh, the, This Japanese user, he just said, I have no idea why this channel got recommended to me because I don't even speak English <laughs> in Japanese.、Uh, I don't know either.、Um, let's see.、Uh, what's your name on the Apple podcast? I think it's just Eric Abroad Podcast. It's been a long time. I'll post it all in the Discord. I got to double check that, to be honest. I haven't checked. Never mind. Just found it. Never mind. Okay. Um, Insane Zombie Man said, subbed because of your vlogs in Japan years ago.、Uh, surprised to see your live stream pop up in my、uh, subscriptions. Very happy that it is. I wasn't sure if anyone would even see it. Like, I used to stream before the bell was a thing.、Um, people like, like and click that notification bell or whatever. I used to do YouTube before that even existed. So I was worried that all of my, I have like, you know, we have our、uh, 30,000 subs on the channel, which is awesome. But I was worried like no one would see it because like the YouTube algorithm would just consider my channel dead. <laughs> But it seems people are still able to see it, which is good. Um, bum, bra, bum, 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 bum. I miss your Oculus Rift videos, says、uh, Jan Man. Me too, man. I,、uh, when, when I have like, the time and the finances to, to get into the, the, the modern VR stuff, I really want to get back into it. But to be honest, it's like the longer I wait for VR, because it's, gonna, it's getting so good now, the longer I wait, the better it's going to be when I get back into it. Rather than being like a troubleshooter of like, demo games and these like, test games. I know they have like, Sony. Play PS4 VR that's like pretty good, and、um, Oculus is good now in the new、uh, the Valve one, whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called.、Um, I know they have a new good one though, but when I get back into it, it's going to be like an endless ocean of good content. So I'm kind of just waiting. I'll probably maybe in like a year or two, but I still have that channel. We could we could revive the VR channel. We'll have three things going. That'd be crazy. It'd be so fun. o s u s u m e Come on, Sai. Kanji. Okay, busing in Japan would take so long, and you were afraid that the Twitch audience would get bored because nothing happens on a bus, so you would tell a long story. Ah, yeah, so I was live streaming on Twitch. So that's a good example where like, YouTube content is a little bit, I would say, more interesting in like, a shorter span. And then Twitch, it was kind of like, fuck, like, I gotta be on this bus for two hours. And I was so worried that it was gonna be boring. But on Twitch, the long, boring stuff is the content. Like, they were like, no, dude, you're fine. So, it was hard for me to get used to that. And I think I got a little too comfortable doing that. And I miss doing, being a little bit more strict with myself and being on YouTube and actually having, like, no, we got to make this good, you know, by my, the best I can make something. So, I'm excited. The Valve Index is what the new、uh, VR is called. Oh, wow. We have one at the office. It's incredible. Oh, man, that's awesome. I think,、uh, actually, I think、um, someone who lives in this building has one. Um, there was someone who had a birthday party. I don't hang out too much with people in my building, but they were having a birthday party and they invited me and I went and had a beer and they were really nice. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm really into VR. And I was like, holy shit, because it was, I used to do a bunch of, a bunch of Oculus stuff and、uh, I didn't try it out, but he was like, anytime you want to do it, let me know. And I haven't taken him up on it. I should probably go do that. You should buy a virtual boy. There we go. Guys. Thank you so much for your support and watching. That was so much fun.、Um, this is new and experimental. So let me know in the comments what you thought of it, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't like it. Perhaps in like, the uploaded VOD form or、uh, in like, the audio form, we could cut out the, the interactions with the comments. Maybe I'll leave them in. People probably prefer leaving them in, but、uh, maybe two versions. 
I don't know. A lot of ideas. We can think of ways we can do this, but I had a lot of fun uh, doing this. Let's do another one very soon. Um, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great night. I know it's a little late. Perhaps we'll do the next one at an earlier time. That's better for everyone. Join the Discord. If not, sound off in the comments and say, hey, I enjoyed this, but consider doing this, and I'll consider everything. Have a powwow with all my moderators and other people, and we'll uh, come up with a plan. This is so fun. Uh, check out my new video if you haven't seen it yet. Join the Discord. Uh, if you'd like to support, there's many ways to do that. You can check in the description below. Uh, never expected, not required, but always appreciated. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out. That was really fun. Went longer than I had hoped, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, next time, maybe I'll be a little bit more like, all right, let's get back into this go. We'll see. Have a great night. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time on Eric Abroad. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great night. See ya. Take care. Have a good night. And signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.